come this way before. Travel with only joy. Circumstances navigate the path, and life happens all so fast. No, we got no means. Sometimes you see, I know, I know we could make it. Even when I'm off beat, I still land on my feet, and nothing can shake me. Cause I know my true love. This is where I am destined to be. I'm not ready to give up. Never, no, never, no, never. I believe in the miracle of life. Life's a break for no return, so learn quickly, they'll come for your goal. Can't the play, can't take it from snow. Cause the devil is a liar. Tell me you're the truth, hey. It's only what you do, hey. hey. So things you gotta do, hey, 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 hey. 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 And you can't fight from the end. Take a second, see the best in me. But much expected, much is given. When you make the living, now I'm giving back to children. Never let the power come first before your happiness. Yes, you can be the best if you go the distance. Mix a little sweat with your persistence. You know that the best things are never instant. Just shine up and let them make it brilliant. Get up, get up, open up your eyes now. It's the moment of truth. No backing down. We're bringing it to life. Ooh, for the children, it's a given. You gotta give it. Be a blessing. Yeah. This my personal statement, run the game like I'm aces, learn and develop patience, determined to be the greatest, yeah, bobbing and weaving, they changing up like the seasons, indigenous to the grind, so I do it for all my people, jabbing the competition, back up against the ropes, you fighting for recognition, I'm fighting just to promote equality where we lack it, our cancer slow on our road, I'm confident we'll make it, we focus on common goals, yeah. Give back, give up, give up, give up, Never give up, stand tall to fight another day. Two toes, two feet, I stand on the ground. I'm going to and fight this final round. I should wait for no other soul. No quickly, they'll come for your goal. Can't get quick, can't take it from snow. Cause the devil is alive. It's all in what you do. Hey, some things you gotta do. Hey, 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 hey. What's up, y'all? What's up? Barbershop Conversations. We in this motherfucker, man. What it do, y'all? What it do? Welcome to the show. To the show! What's poppin', DB? Andrew Charles, man. What it do? Eric, Eric, Donald, Donald, DB, DB, Eric in St. Louis, man. What it do, y'all? We in this motherfucker, Rob. I know you heard your favorite part, big homie. Yeah, man. We in this son of a bitch, man. Black Attack Circle. What it do? What it do, man? Silver. What's up, homemade? We in this motherfucker. Unique Don. How you doing, ma? You gravy? All right. You Gucci? <laughs> I got to stop saying that, man. All right. All right, man. We in this son of a gun, man. I appreciate everybody coming in here tonight. Raquel Miller, her being here shortly. I just got off the phone with her management, and and and, and we're good there. But uh, yeah, man, I appreciate y'all coming in tonight, man. Wasn't yesterday a great show, man? I rewatched it today, and it's funny. When you hosting the show, you miss so much. Man, you miss so much, man. Damn, because you're always thinking about the next question sometimes. You know what I mean? 
and uh uh i was i was sitting there li listening to the show i said man man we was getting off last night jamie jamie and monty was getting off last night y'all that shit was a hell of a show man and uh I'm glad I appreciate y'all being a part of it, man. Thank you. What's up, Triple OG? Where you been, man? Fred, they got Nick Cannon, man down. What do you mean they got Nick Cannon? I don't know what that means. Yeah, they did a hell of a show, man. What happened to Nick Cannon? I'm very interested in that now. I don't listen to the radio, so I don't I have no I, man. I couldn't tell you the last time I cut the radio on. Yeah, they did a hell of a show, man. I rewatched it today. The sound bites, oh man, sheesh, sound bites were crazy. You know what I mean? And uh, I'm gonna repost them on my uh, on my Instagram. I mean, on my on my YouTube later. But uh, yeah, man, it's a hell of a show. Yeah, they got Nick Cannon, man down. They took him off. After Professor Griff interview today, when did he interview with Professor Griff? I'm. That's interesting. That's interesting. You want to know that's funny? Because I had no idea that happened. You know why? Because I actually called Professor Griff today. That's funny that you say that. Damn, that's interesting. Damn. Man, I didn't even know that. Wow. That, that's a great topic, man. Oh, so, 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 I, so I was watching Blue Bud's show today. And, and what are y'all thoughts? Uh, I've been in here sometimes. Sometimes a nigga like me has to listen. <laughs> Look at Triple OG feeling real young in this of a guy. Sometimes a nigga like me got to listen. Oh, man, we got man, we got some confirmed. We got some great shows. Don't forget. Oh, Cheryl Dorsey. I, I'm, I'm putting a flyer out as soon as this show ends. Pretty fucking dope. You know what I mean? Pretty fucking dope. We got Cheryl Dorsey in here and... uh. And the pretty beast, she just knocked on the she just knocked on the window. Was like, let me in through the front door. And I'm like, I got you, my, I got you, man. So without further ado, ten and zero, undefeated all the way from San Francisco by way of San Diego. Pretty beast, Raquel Miller. Welcome to the show. Hey, <laughs> how you doing? How you doing? I'm good. I am good. I can't complain. I'm blessed. Okay, you just got done working out, hanging out. Um, no, I just, um, I've been working all day. I uh -huh. didn't feel too good today. So I stayed home. Oh. Oh, okay. <laughs> so I stayed home today. Um, I just worked on some things. Did you see the Mike Miller? The Michaela? Yeah. I watched the fight. Um, I thought that, um, Michaela showed a lot of skill tonight. Um, I'm really looking forward to seeing women boxing have equally talented fighters fight each other so that we can see how ex much more exciting the fights could be. And mm -hmm. both of the girls is, you know, not to take nothing away from Helen Joseph, but I'm just well, ready to see the best fighting the best so that we can really showcase what women boxing can do. Yeah. And, and you know, I was <laughs> watching the fight and I absolutely forgot that the rounds were two minutes. And I'm watching it and I'm like, what the fuck is going on? I'm like, I'm <laughs> where the God. I'm like, why the fuck are they ending the round so quick? And then at the fifth round, I looked at the TV and I'm like, oh, it's two minutes around. Yes. <laughs> Would you like three minutes? Um, I think that it's, I think women need to fight three minute rounds. I think that it's too short, but I also think if we're going to fight three minute rounds, we need to get paid three minute rounds. Mm -hmm. So I feel like if they're not going to pay us and how they're paying us right now, then leave it, you know, because mm -hmm. what's the point of fighting and getting more damage for yourself and you still not getting no money. But if they're going to, you know, pay us, switch the rounds up and let's go. Facts, facts. And um, how did you start by speaking of getting paid before you was getting paid fighting? How did this journey all begin? Um, I've always been a fighter. I've always been somebody that, you know, fought street fights and stuff like that. And I really just wanted to challenge myself. I street wanted to fight. get in the ring and yeah. Just protecting your mind. Nah. <laughs> it's over a dude, I got a fight over on my own. <laughs> the streets can have them. That ain't for me. <laughs> uh, yeah, that ain't for me. But uh, no, a lot of times um, people, women sometimes get confused. Uh -huh. Not just women, people in general get confused because you might be a a cute girl, or you might be nice, or you might laugh and smile a lot. And sometimes people get that confused and think that you won't whoop their ass. Mm -hmm. But oh, you will. Oh. And now, I will. Now, you got a turn up button. No, you got a real turn up button. And I didn't know that until I was in your presence. Uh, I appreciate you blessing my park up the hill. And uh, 
I, I I was just feeling your energy, and I'm like, oh, Raquel Miller got a real turn up button. I didn't. I didn't <laughs> you got older. I, don't, I didn't just pick boxing because it was fun. It was something to do. I picked boxing because boxing saved my life. Because for some people, boxing changes them. For some people, boxing saves them. And I'm one of those people that boxing saved me. Why did you say boxing saved you? What What was prior to boxing? Um, well, because it really helped me channel a lot of my frustration. Mm-hmm. It helped me channel channel a lot of um, negativity and, and anger at times. And it really helped me calm down and not just mm-hmm. snap off on people and stuff like that. So it really just helped me channel it and really grow. Mm-hmm. And I'm really thankful for that because it really helped me be a lot more chill and my turn up button turned down a lot. <laughs> <laughs> what were you doing prior to boxing? Um, I was a law clerk before I started boxing. And uh, initially I wanted to be an attorney wow. and I wanted to be a couple of things before boxing, but um, I worked as a law clerk before boxing and I started boxing full time and working full time. And the rest is history and I'm here. Okay. So talk about lacing up the glove. <laughs> Was there any, uh, and, and and I'm asking questions for the macro level, not as an independent, was there any level of um, intimidation uh, walking into a male dominant sport? Um, it can be very intimidating to walk into a male dominated sport or a male dominated gym and no one acknowledges you. No one respects that you're there to put in work. A lot of people think that you're there to look cute or to meet some guys. And so I remember the first time I walked into a gym None of the guys acknowledged me outside of just kind of giving me a look like, oh, my God, she's cute. Mm-hmm. But no one really gave me that second look as if I was serious. And that's how I, I got the name Pretty Beast, because I made a promise to myself that day that I was going to outwork all of them every single time I touched the gym. As soon as that we spar, I was going to get into business. Uh-huh. And that's how the name Pretty Beast was born. And uh, speaking of managing like, oh, she's cute. How do you manage that? How do you because I because I, I'm not going to screenshot and send you the DMs I got today, but uh, <laughs> I'm definitely not going to do that shit. But <laughs> um, <laughs> that's funny. How, I mean, I mean, I mean, you I mean, you full blown beautiful. So how, Thank you. how I appreciate how, that. Absolutely. How do you manage that? Nah, I'm. Yeah. Yeah. I, I know I'm beautiful and there's business on the table as well. I mean, to be honest, I'm a beautiful person. You know, it's cool. I look cute. I can clean that well, but in the gym, I don't be this cute. I don't be that cute. Even today, I was like, I don't got time. I'm not putting nothing on my face. I'm about to wash my face and sit here and do this interview. But um, <laughs> I think uh, I think that really, it's really about what's in the inside. And I just, long as long as people check that at the door, like, yeah, like cute stuff is cool. But when it's time for business, it's business. And I don't got time to be cute. I don't got time to play and respect me for my hard work. Respect me for the type of person that I am. And it's just a bonus that I'm kind of cute and I clean up well. You know, it's just a bonus. But it's a bonus. Yeah, it's a bonus. But, you know, respect the hustle, respect the grind, respect me as a person because, you know, I, I carry myself in a certain light because of the type of person that I am. And, you know, I think that being attractive is cool, but I'm dope inside. So mm-hmm. it's just a bonus. And uh, speaking of the business at hand, uh, 10 and 0, how's the business of boxing and in terms of what's next? So and- bullshit. No. <laughs> <laughs> Why you bullshitting, Rolando? <laughs> um, you know, to just to be honest, I'm just like, I'm really starting to be fed up with boxing. Um, so don't be surprised if I retire, you know, within the next, you know, maybe year or two, because the politics and the bullshit that goes on with boxing is just very tiring. And, um, I'm a light. I'm I'm frustrated with it. I've been was supposed to fight for a title. I've been supposed to have some bigger fights. Um, I've been pushing my promoter. I've been pushing my managers. Now this Corona thing came about and it's really, really just wrecking shop because it's like, I can't even be mad at nobody right now because there's no fights happening outside of top rank. But you know, it's like as a black woman, as a fighter, I really felt like we're not given the same type of push as some of our counterparts. And then you got, you know, silly people that are in the, light so to speak and really jealous of others and don't want to really kind of share this platform Mm -hmm. and it's just unfortunate so it's like you grinding day in day out and thank god that i've been blessed to have other talents that i can do and other things but without that i wouldn't even be able to box full-time right now so the business of boxing is really trash and you just said a lot we're gonna have to break that answer down (laughs) uh let's work backwards uh the the last statement you said was was uh sharing the spotlight and uh obviously the obvious people the 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 most famous uh female boxers are probably 
his own crews, uh, but, but she's above you. Uh, Carissa Shields. Uh, I would throw Napoleon Kaufman in there. Uh, Alicia, yes. Kaufman, excuse me, Alicia Kaufman. I, I think that's her name. And mm -hmm. uh, is that is that? And I case? think that. Um, I, I think that um, some of the women. I think that like a lot of time with women. And I and I hope and I don't really want to gener generalize, but it is what it is. I think that a lot of times when they don't possess certain things that other people possess, they feel like they got to hold the, the spotlight all to themselves. Now, we're in a very competitive sport as a whole. So do I expect to be kumbaya with everybody that I'm going to fight? No. But I also at the same time, this is a sport. You know, if you give me respect, I'm going to get respect. You know, if you give respect, take your respect. When we get into that ring. You know, all bets is off. We came to handle business and win. But after that, I'm going to respect you. I'm going to tip my hat to you because I know outside of this, how challenging it is just to be a boxer, especially at a high level. And I think that a lot of times women in this sport, at least, really hold each other back because you said you want to tear each other down or sh like really shelter your little spotlight when we can't build the sport if we're not really like, look. Is this girl I can fight? Is this girl I can fight? There's some really talented girls out here, but if we never get the spotlight yeah. or we never get the shine or we never get the exposure, how they, how, you know. Got that. Now, you, you and Alicia Napoleon is her name, right? Alicia Napoleon. Mm -hmm. her name. How mm -hmm. come y'all never fought? It seemed like y'all. I don't know. Go ask her. <laughs> like Go ask Lou DiBella. <laughs> well, he gonna get his interview. I mean, he gonna get the interview. So every every name you mention on this shuttle is definitely gonna hear everything that you say. So <laughs> yeah, I mean, I think that that's a great fight. I think that Lisa, Lisa, Alicia Napoleon is talented. I think that it's a great fight. I think she's tough. I think she can fight. I think the I think the fans want to see that fight. You know, I would love to have that fight. Mm -hmm. Hannah Gabriel's is under Lou DiBella management. That's a great fight. You know, I'm her mandatory. It's some women out here that's handling business and I would love to, you know, fight them. I would love for those opportunities. So your guess is good as mine. Has it ever been presented to you or have you ever offered or? No, um, I've, I've, I've asked numerous times. Um, I've asked numerous times to fight pretty much all of the girls that's within my weight class that I can fight. You name them from Clarissa Shields to Hannah Gabriel to Alicia Napoleon to Callie Reese. Um, mm -hmm. um, I try to make a fight with Tori Nelson, but it's like I can only do so much. And not to take anything away from them, maybe they want to fight too. It's a lot of business that goes on the outside. I mean, on the you know back end that people don't really know about. But I've I've managed. I've tried to email coaches. I've emailed managers before. I tried to get the fight to happen with um Cornejo. Reached out to her manager personally myself to try to facilitate that fight and then bring it to the Bella and say, hey. We had 360 that wanted to give us the fight, but mm -hmm. they turned the fight down. You've actually went out of your way and and and, and put on all three hats, promoter, oh, fighter, manager. Several times, several times. And so it's very irritating and very frustrating when you see people get online and say, oh, you ducking this person. Are you ducking that person when I don't have to duck a soul? You know, mm -hmm. I don't have to duck a soul. I chose boxing. I know I can fight. I know I'm talented and I want to challenge myself to fight the best so that I can prove and solidify my spot. So don't come at me. Don't play with me. Has it ever been any like a uh, personal conversation with you and Carissa Shields at all? Salute um, to the queen. Salute to the queen. Pound for pound boxing channel. Salute to the queen. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> um, yes. Um, so Clarissa and I definitely have a history. Um, I went to 2012 games as alternate in London when the first time for the women to go to the Olympics. Um, so we've been teammates before. Oh. Um, yeah, so we we have some history. Um, I've been to the Olympic trials two times with a bronze medal. We fought in the amateurs before. We've been on the same team before. We traveled out of the country before on Team USA. So, of course, um, honestly, I didn't really have no issues with old girl. Um, she was, There was an interview some years back, and she tried to take the interview out of context mm -hmm. and um, – made it seem as if I was hating on her or Matt or, you know, it was just really bullshit. But reality is she really was just jealous of me and my shine. She was jealous that, you know, people were excited about me. I fought on the rock nation card. People like me, you know, I'm a good person. People going to love me, period. We'll get to the, the, the Egypt question later on down the line. I'm definitely, and I'll, okay. and I'll definitely answer. Yeah. 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 yeah yes. We'll get to that. I appreciate you, honey. Uh, so, so you guys have sparred as well. Being on yeah, We've been in camp I'm together well, numerous I'm times. Good. I've been to London as her sparring partner. Um, I've been on Team USA for three, four years. So, of course. Yeah. How many rounds? That's how I got to go as a 
foreign partner because oh no i'm sorry i'm, I'm talking over the guests i'm sorry i'm just getting excited you know no. Be, because I, Carissa, numerous watch rounds. This. that's why Chris is going to go and watch this. That's why. Yeah, so numerous rounds. Mm -hmm. Yes, numerous rounds. rounds. Probably, like, like, like too many rounds to count. Um, you said how many rounds to count? Probably, if I had to put a number on it, and we fought several times in amateurs too, but probably maybe fifteen rounds, maybe oh, 12, 15 good. rounds, that's something like that. That's definitely enough. And how did it go in in, in amateurs? Um, I felt like. I felt like I got robbed out of some decisions in amateurs and I'm not the type of person to sit up here and be like, Oh, they robbed me. They robbed me. And you know, like I keep it real. I felt like some of the decisions, if she wasn't who she was and she didn't have the title of having the Olympic gold medal behind her, I think that some of the decisions would have went separately. Yeah. We fought to some split decisions. Like most of our decisions have all been split decisions. I think besides one and the oh, one wow. that it wasn't a slip, the split decision, I really felt like I got robbed and they really gave her all the rounds and I really felt some type of way about that. But we have a long history. I think that it's only right that we get to get it on. I think that she tries to belittle me and make it seem like I'm scared of her. Um, but the truth, the, the truth is in the pudding. Like, you know what time it is. I know what time it is. Like, it ain't a scared bone in my body, baby. You sit in that contract and we making it happen. And that's that on that. I didn't know the amateur records was so close in terms of split. How many fights? How many times did y'all fight? I think we fought three times in amateurs. Three times. I'm not mistaken. And we so fought in the Olympic trials. We fought in the nationals and some other tournament. I can't recall which um, tournament. Two split decisions and one UD. Mm -hmm. Oh, so y'all are y'all pretty much yeah y'all right in the line. And now it's just who, who's better as a pro now. Um, and and also I want to <laughs> clarify some things because I've heard her say several times that um they sent me contracts and that we turned down the contracts. But now that we're here, we can actually discuss it in its entirety. So basically what happened is I was one of the first females to fight on the Rock Nation card. Uh -huh. And I had a very, un I just didn't really have a good experience with fighting the Rock Nation. Um, I sold about 20,000 in tickets in a week. And it was some real underhanded stuff going on. Wow. And Rock Nation really just didn't want to give me my just due. They was kind of like fighting me a little bit to get some, some of the money that was owed to me. They were just doing some underhanded stuff. So fast forward to a month later, Rock Nation reached out to me and said, hey, we want to offer you the pro fight. I mean, the debut fight for Clarissa. Um, and we want to offer you $8,000. Do I look like I got boo-boo the food right on my forehead? Like, are you guys stupid? Like, do you not, are you not going to try to acknowledge the fact that for one, I'm a four time, you know, I'm four years on Team USA, I'm a four or five time national champion. I'm a silver medalist at the world championships. Like you're going to put some respect on my name, period. And on top of that, you just did bad business with me a month prior to this to try to come at me and disrespect me with $8,000 debut. So it wasn't even about her. For one, I had bad experience with the company prior to that and then turn around and offer me $8,000. like, if we're not fighting for it. We've already did this in amateurs. We've already done this for these two minutes, four round thing. It's time to step it up. Now, if it's not going to be for no title or something worthwhile, then you tell me what's the point. Mm -hmm. So we were like, absolutely not. So that was the contract that I turned down that I'm ducking so much from. That was the actual factual what actually happened. And then my manager, I'm managed by split T management. They call. Well, I didn't even get a call from this, but I had to call him because I was getting some conversations saying like, oh, you're ducking me. I sent a contract. So I reached out to my manager like, yo, what's going on? Are these girls offering me some fights and you're not telling me because <laughs> I be damned if I'm online, you know, you know, yapping away and they're offering me fights and uh -huh. you're not, you know, telling me. And he was like, Raquel, first off, boxing is a business. This is about money more than anything. So yeah. if they offer something that was tangible or anything that was worthwhile, I would have told you. He said that Clarissa had a fight coming up. The opponent fell through and they called and it was like two weeks out to the fight and they offered me that fight. Uh -huh. But the whole notion that they've been sending me some contracts and I've been turning them down is nonsense. Mm. And that's never happened. But they did offer the debut fight and we turned it down because it was bull. And I didn't want to fight under Rock Nation anymore. And then the second time, my opponent fell out when they called me on a two-week notice and asked me if I wanted to fight. That's stupid. You know, let's get it on. Give me a regular camp. You get a regular camp. Let's let's do it. Like I know I'm one of the best out there. The world just don't know it yet. Mm. As soon as they get a hold of it, so as soon as they get a hold of it, and they see me, they go no. And and I'm not just talking it. I'm living it every single day. So when it's time for me to put it on the line, I'm putting it on the line. Have y'all spoke since? 
since like y- y- y'all disconnected in the pros, I mean, disconnected in the amateurs and, and now that she has the shine that she's keeping from you, have y'all actually had some interactions? No, I'm a shine. Wait, wait, first, let's get this clear. I'm a shine regardless. No, I'm going to be a millionaire regardless. So she can't keep no shine from me because baby, I am the sun. <laughs> I am a God. So God is within me. I'm a shine regardless. Just so we have that clear. But um, yes, yeah, so I won't be seeing each other. It'd be bad blood. She'd be acting like she don't see me most of the time, but you know, I see her and I be talking shit like, what's up? A lot of times it just be funny to me. Like it's uh-huh. not even that serious to me. Like the hate that you hold and all of that, that's not like I'm blessed over here. I ain't got no issues with you. When we get in that ring, we gonna handle it. But I'm a black woman. What I look like trying to shoot you down. Girl, you shooting yourself down. You know saying you blocking your own blessings and I ain't gotta be a part of none of that, boo. Like I shine and you just mad at that. And that's mm-hmm. all it is. Honestly. I'll be candid on and shout out to Terrence and Tyler Terrence. Greetings to you from the Frederick Douglass family. You as What's a that female Douglas family. <laughs> you as a female need special recognition for your toughness with many men don't show it show it in 2020. So I uh, appreciate you, Terrence. Um it seemed like that's the and I was going through like she already fought Franchine Cruz to fight the her first her, I believe that was her pro debut. Mm-hmm. I covered that. That was on the Andre Ward Kovalev. Two or one? one no, or it wasn't one. on Kovalev, and it wasn't. It wasn't I, on. I, I no, was it wasn't on Kovalev one. It was Kovalev, Kovalev one. one. I know. I yeah. interviewed her. I know. I interviewed Carissa on her pro debut, and mm-hmm. uh, um, it seemed like honestly, I'm not. I'm not bullshitting. I'm not much to kiss people ass, but it seemed like that's the only. This is the only fight in boxing that makes sense in terms on a woman. You know what I mean? And it's a honestly, it's a main event fight, and, and, and I would tell Carissa the same thing. Like I'm not. BSing you at all. Like it's the only fight in y'all division that makes sense. I agree. I mean, I, I do feel like, and my thing is, I don't mind fighting whoever. You mm-hmm. know, I wish that Lou DeBella really moved and really pushed the fighters down. Of course, there's some things that's out of people control, but it ain't that hard to make these fights happen. Mm-hmm. You got a network, put us on this network, you know, and the thing about it where people don't understand the business aspect of it, when you have TV, you have the money. You have that you have the power. And so a lot of times, you know, people will think that you can really make some stuff happen. But when you get fighters and they're, you know, undefeated or they're good and they have titles, no one can fight on the club level show. So it's up to Lou DeBella to really get us that TV action to where we can fight each other and it makes sense and everybody make money. So, you know, what I'm saying that's a big issue. Why we're not able to really make these fights happen. A lot of girls, I think, want to fight each other because I think that that's going to take women boxing to the next level. When the promotion is equaled up to the fights that are happening, people want to see it and they're going to be impressed with the fights. Talk about Lou DeBella, uh, uh, if you don't mind. I'll, I'm actually going to I'll actually send this Lou DeBella personally at first thing in the morning. I'll send him the interview. But talk about like uh, you, you said the lack of lackluster promotions or something or the TV deals. Uh, I think that personally, um, I feel like Lou DeBella does believe in women boxing. I think that I don't know all the way what all the holdup is, to be honest, because I'm a fighter and I'm on the fighter standpoint. But I do hope that Lou DeBella gets it together and allows us to fight like you are having fights with fighters on the zone or they're fighting on showtime. Like we want to fight. Nobody got time to be sitting around training day in and day out every single day. So I can't really speak on what's happening on the back end. All I know is I need it to happen. Mm. And that's that. Like, I don't know the business of it because I'm not, you know, in it, so to speak from that aspect. But I just know as a fighter, I feel like we are really, you know, sitting idly waiting for it to happen when there's a lot of able fighters to, to fight right now you know clarissa is one fighter but that's not everybody there's some bomb fights to be happening and oh. it's up to the promoters to make it happen so lou debella has a lot of talented women you know shout out to my best friend tiara brown mm-hmm. you know it's a lot of us that's on this platform that can handle our business and shine and really take it to the next level and we need lou to step up and make it happen for us yeah and it's have you fought on the broadway shows i fight on one broadway show show yes and is 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 that always an option for you or is that um ideally yes um that's an option but i want to fight on the network and you've and and, it seemed, and you've never fought on the zone huh 
No, we haven't found them. So, uh-huh. and you know, hopefully, there's been some talk behind the scenes of all women's card happening, and I think it needs to happen. And even if it's not an all women's card, it needs to happen because you have these promoters that are really holding women boxing back. It's 2020, and you got top rank who got one fighter. That's a woman. You know what I'm saying? And it's like that's ridiculous. Mm-hmm. You got. You know, Al Heyman, who don't support no women fighters. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? And then it's like you have the zone where they cater to the European women fighters. So who's going to look out for the black women fighters? Mm-hmm. I guess we just out here on our own. You know what I'm saying? Trying to figure it out because we're not, we we in charge of promoting ourselves. You know, ain't nobody really giving us that platform. I'm making it happen by myself. Like, shout out to everybody that, that's Team Pretty Beast and really rock with me. But I haven't got to fight on national TV. I haven't got to have to, I haven't been able to be showcased to the world. I've just been putting it, you know, putting in the work. I've been grinding it out the mud and making a name for myself. Mm-hmm. But thanks to nobody but myself and my family and my team that pushed me and promote me. Nobody else but me. Well, it's working because I recognized you at the park. So, so, so your yeah. <laughs> so your hustle and grind is is really working. I mean, hold up, that's Raquel Miller. I was sitting there working on my phone. I said, "Hold up, that's a pretty yes. bitch." <laughs> <laughs> yes, I was in there putting this working out. That was a hard workout too. Yeah, I wasn't even that happy. I said, "You like what?" Yeah, I didn't even know you know it. What are you talking about? <laughs> Tired. I feel all right now. It worked out. How much longer is your deal with Luda Bella? Can I ask that? Um, uh, it's gonna be up next year. Mm-hmm. But the coronavirus really kind of oh, set that yeah. back because right. with us not being able to fight and it being a you know the shutdown mm-hmm. that extends our contracts out. So shift gears a get uh, a bit. You you mentioned Tierra Brown. And I've interviewed her numerous times. Uh, uh, she's a police officer. Yes, I've I've obviously to prepare for this interview. I've gone up and down, up and down through your Instagram and uh, whatever yeah. else find on you and uh i've seen you post about black Lives, the black Lives matters movement as it pertains to uh social injustice as it pertains to uh, america in 2020 have you and tier brown had any conversations that that if you have that you can share publicly um yes so um i am pre- i'm going to be starting um the real beast talk podcast really soon so check it out because okay. it's definitely going to come pretty soon i'm going to do my first um my first interview it's going to be probably within the next um two weeks or so and tier is going to be one of my guests yeah. but absolutely we talk about that i'm sorry i don't got the coronavirus <laughs> i sound a little bit hoarse <laughs> it's not funny it's not funny uh-huh. <laughs> but i didn't feel that good today so my voice is not guys my voice is not this deep for real can you see, can you see the comment can you see the comments? <laughs> no. I oh, can't you can't see, see the comments? Oh, click, click comments in the thing and you'll see it. Okay, I got to see the comments. Yeah, they love you in the chat. Oh, man. Yeah, I, I love them. I love oh, my I, people. They, uh, I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> I, I, I get to see y'all. I finally get to see it. <laughs> oh, they coming. Oh, they coming. So, oh, your hands are full now. <laughs> yes, my hands is full. I'm trying to rush this to listen. But okay, so shout out to my best friend, Tierra Brown. Um, she's a black woman. She's a police officer. And I literally legit call her sometime and it makes me cry because when, when she wanted to be a police officer, I was like, why you want to be a police officer? Like I wasn't really understanding. She said, well, how else are we going to see some type of change if we don't get in there on the front lines? And I said, she's absolutely right. And it's really hard as a black woman being a police officer, she said, because I feel like she said, like, Rock, I feel like I get it from both ends. I got people that see me on the job when and they like, you know, you a traitor, you a coward. And then she said, I'm but I'm out here trying to do the right thing. And she is one of the people that has the biggest hearts that I've ever met. That's why she's one of my best friends. And it's a very slippery slope. It's very challenging. And she says, I would never like allow somebody to hurt somebody on my watch. And so, you know, I tip my hat to her. I love her because she trains you know, full time, super hard and then turn around and do 14 hour, 12 hour shifts. And so, you know, it's very challenging. I told her that I want her to come on my show. I want her to be one of my first guests because she needs to tell it from her side and from the inside of being a police officer, being a black woman, being a black person and what it feels like. So stay tuned, guys, because it's coming soon. <laughs> I try to do better. I, I, I'm not like over the top, like when it comes to social media, but I want to do better because I think that I think that I got some important things to talk about, and I think some people want to hear. It. Yeah, right. You, right, you got. Right. Yeah. <laughs> no, you've so, been very firm. No, you've been very firm on on social media, and uh, uh, what type of systemic changes do you think we need? I think that for one, black people need to get into the habit of spending with with blacks. Like the black economic dollar matters. 
you know, you can't be sh- shouting out Black Lives Matter and turn around and spend all of your money every other place and not really keep Black dollars within the Black community. And so I think that one thing needs to happen is we need to get out of the crabs in a barrel mentality, like love on each other, support on each other. You know, like if somebody send me a like, I'm liking it. If you send me something and I can afford it, I'm buying it. You know, if I can shout you out, I'm showing you some love, like get out. You know what I'm saying? This hate is in the way. Mm -hmm. And then, you know what I'm saying? Once we start loving each other, because it's like, I told my sister, she told me she was laughing and she told me she was crazy because I was really, really upset when I seen the George Floyd thing. And she was like, well, what you think? I said, man, I'm running up on the police. Get the fuck out. I mean, you know, get up off of him. Like, Uh I don't want to sit there with my camera out. You know, that's why I got into boxing. I told y'all, came a long way. <laughs> but, um, you know, but we must matter to each other as amen. well. Amen. You know, like we must. And I, and I can't stress that enough because I'm from San Francisco. I'm from Hunters Point. Um, a six-year-old little baby just got murdered. Oh, Jace, you know what I'm saying? Jace Young just got murdered a block away from where my mother lives, a block away from where my six-year-old nephew is having summer vacation. And if his life don't matter to us, then how are we going to be talking about Black Lives Matter to these police? Like, it's equal. Like, we got to get it together. Like, if you in the community and you're not for the community, you got to go. It's two different sides of us. You know what I'm saying? And if you're not for the movement, if you're not for the people, you got to go. Even if you share the same color skin as me, if you're not for the movement, you got to go. Mm-hmm. Period. If you disrupting our communities, if you killing our communities, you got to go. Mm-hmm. And I'm not going to turn the other cheek. I'm not going to not say nothing because his life matters. Just like, you know what I'm saying, Black Lives Matter when these police kill us. Period. But we got to matter to each other. And I think that the police need to definitely go through more psychological training. Like they need to be, y'all got them under the lie detector test, asking them about if they smoke weed. You know, you ask them, how do you feel about the KKK? You ask them, how do you feel about black people? You ask them, how you feel about racism? You know, and how do you look at this color skin or, you know, at this person's skin? You ask them some real stuff besides if they smoke some weed. Who cares if they smoke some weed or smoke some dope? How do you feel about these people? That's what we need to know. You know, where is your, what's your history? What's your lineage? Your family, KKK, you know what I'm saying? What you about? We need to know some real stuff. And then also, once you get into the for- in the force, teach them. Matter of fact, police officers hire me. I teach y'all how to fight. For real, I'll be trained. <laughs> I teach y'all hire me. I teach the whole academy now how to fight. So uh-huh. maybe if y'all know how to fight, then y'all wouldn't be so quick to pull out these guns. Because there's no way- reason why you own this force you in these high pressure situations that you're supposed to be trained for and you don't know how to fight. What is the point of that? And then also, you know, some therapy and, and to my people, therapy is okay. You know, speaking out, talking about how you're feeling, it's okay. Let's talk about that. Let's talk about mental health, mental health. Let's talk about real issues that we're dealing with so we can get better and we can grow. Mm. Okay. I'm done preaching y'all. No, 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 no. <laughs> out the big dog. But, we'll, uh, we'll get to that question in a second. He wanted to ask about, uh, uh, Alejandro Jimenez. We'll get there. Uh, uh, oh, I was, who's that boy? That <laughs> <make you like. laughs> what happened to that boy? Yeah, I don't know. Hey. Did y'all say I sound like her? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> but no. <laughs> 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 no I'm being serious. What, uh, what should we do the first week of November? He's Joe Biden. What should we do the first week of November as, 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 as a black person going, going into the polls? Should we vote for Biden? Should we vote for Trump? Should we vote for Kanye? Should we not vote? <laughs> you know what? I'm going to keep it real. I'm going to just keep it real. <laughs> My little views are a little off. No. That, and I'm not going to say our votes don't matter, but we need to start working on our own. We need to work on our own. Because if we expected them to save us with these votes, it ain't gonna happen. Mm-hmm. You know, and I and I mean Biden's here, Trump is there, apples, oranges. Is that really gonna help me as a black woman? Is that really gonna help me launch my black business? Is that really gonna help me in my community? Mm-hmm. I don't know. I think that um vote for whoever you're gonna vote for. Um, I'm just gonna try to do my part. I don't know. It's like goddamn picking like one bad day over another. I don't know. Oh, I think they all are trash. I think politics are trash. Um and I think that blacks should vote as one. I do think that we should kind of figure it out. But I think more importantly than the president, I think we need to get into the voting in our cities. You know, these mayors, these supervisors, these tax laws, all of this stuff that really, really affects us, you know, firsthand. Mm-hmm. Now, the president and all of that is like, no, we need to be voting for the House. 
voting for the Senate, voting on these laws, voting on all of these different reforms that's really going to affect us. And the president does affect us too, but we got to get involved. We got to get more informed on what's really going on. And it's not just the president. And I also think black dollars matter, support each other, because when you got dollars, then you got the power. That's just like how you don't see the police killing no Jewish people. Big pop. Big, you, know, big you don't see power. them killing none of because they people not having it. So we need to get out of our rah, rah, rah and get really serious about it and strategic about it. Like you kill one of us and we ain't spending a dollar, you know, and I hear people say, oh, I'm not my ancestors. Now, you're not your ancestors because our ancestors didn't get on them buses for a year if it took that for them to get those changes that they needed to happen. Our ancestors pulled that money together and made some stuff happen and really made changes. And so out here, it's like you got a lot of people that act like they tough. But when it's really time to get to it, you're not tough, tough. Because my sister was laughing at me, but, you know, I've been at the gun range, you know, I I've been buying it. me some pistols. I've been, you know, <laughs> and you ain't, the pretty beast ain't just a boxer. <laughs> no, you, no, and you absolutely I ain't playing. Right. I'm no. finna buy a 57 Ruger and it's real pretty. <laughs> and I think that women, and if there's some ladies on here, I think I'm probably going to, but I don't care. This is how I feel. If you dating, I think you should not go on a date on a new date without no pistol in your purse. So guys, just know, if I go on a date with you, I'm probably going to be strapped up because, you know, we matter. <laughs> so, I ain't going on no more dates without my 22 in my purse. Uh, and I can fight too, but that's that on that. Uh, yeah, go to the rain. Yeah, <laughs> Learn how to yeah. shoot. No, I, um, I couldn't agree with you more in terms of uh, protecting ourselves to the fullest extent of the law. I couldn't agree with you more. And I agree with you too, because that is a topic of conversation on this channel quite often politics you know what i mean it's a barbershop man we man we talk shit and swallow spit here every night you know what i mean and uh i tell people all the time uh well every night that it's like the lesser of the two evils joe biden told me to my face you ain't black if you don't vote for him I'm like nigga you what? ain't black like what fool <laughs> nigga <laughs> what like, don't even talk oh. to us like that you ain't invited to the cookout ain't none of y'all come to the cookout we go to the cookout together mm -hmm. body here but See, if a white professor told us that, if a white teacher told us that, we'll be running to the highest of the, oh, this teacher said this, but because he's a politician and they say he's the lesser of the two evils, we got to vote for him. And then Donald Trump. I mean, uh, enough has been said about Donald Trump. You know what I mean? Uh, Donald Trump is a wild boy. Yeah. <laughs> this whole time right now was a very interesting time to be alive, but uh, like, I don't think that Biden is no better than Trump. Uh huh. I don't. I don't think none of that. I mean, like I said, I think that we need to get we back into. Stop. We need to get into homeschooling. We need to get into growing our own food. You know, making sure that oh. we know how to fight. We know how to shoot. We need to take back our own communities and stop waiting for them. Like, have you seen these cities for sale? We need to pull our money together and buy a city and make our own city. Make it happen. Oh, and you I, I, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. I got white friends. I got friends of all different races, but. I'm still black. Every morning I wake up, I'm a black woman. Mm -hmm. So I'm always going to love on my people. And I'm not, and you know, me being pro black is not anti white. Yeah, you're right. See, it is what it is. Yeah. And, and, and Terrence Bailey said, Oh, oh, oh we can talk that. Oh, 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 we can talk beast on that for sure. We can, Terrence. You know what I mean, and the great Drew Titan says she you're actually right. Too and got hands, you sure not. Sure do. <laughs> <laughs> and then it was funny. My sister, I told them, like, let's go to the to the shooting range. And I took, you know, my sisters and you know, all my ladies to the shooting range. And at first, you know, they was a little bit nervous, and we the only black women in there. But when you go to the shooting range, you realize everybody else is learning. The whole family is in there, from the kids to the wives to the husbands, they all in there. Where we at? Mm -hmm. So when my ladies in there, we know how to cock them things that we know. I brought my six-year-old nephew, he was in there banging an AR-15. I saw the whole family going to be ready. You know, uh, we need to educate ourselves and get out the habit of thinking that guns are bad. No, stupid people with guns are bad, but protecting your family ain't bad. Protecting your household is not bad. Educating yourself is not bad mm. because everybody else doing it. Why aren't we? Nah, 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 nah. That's that. That's stone cold fact. You want to take phone calls and stuff from the fans? Yeah, these are my people. Okay. I got some questions. I got some answers. What's up? Oh, yeah. They coming. Oh, they coming for sure, man. I'm. It better be some good questions. Don't ask me the same uh, questions. I always get asked. We in the park. Like we, I need some new. <laughs> I need some new that. That's I get all that stuff out the way. You Straight know, up. I, be creative. I get, <laughs> or I'm going to just be silent. I'll be like. <laughs> <I'm just> <laughs> <saying>. <laughs> he might. 
shit, whoever is somebody you might laugh out with a guy that got a nine milli, you know what I mean? You know what I mean? So hey, y'all, y'all got a 57 Ruger. What's happening? That's my next gun. <laughs> hey. <laughs> First call of that. Oh man. My nigga, this is dedication. This is anti-hesitation. Celebration. Hey, what's up, TV? What's up? She rocking with us tonight, yo. TV, don't be long-winded, motherfucker. Don't be long-winded. What's up, nigga? What you got? Hey, man, I ain't gonna be long-winded, but hey, you know, I'm a combat veteran, so you know I'm quick on the trigger. Uh, okay, I see you. I'm learning. I'm ready. I'm learning. Hey, um, like I said, uh, it, the whole thing with the, you know, the Second Amendment, you know, like how you said that, you know, said you, you're down with that. And I said, you know, we, we, we can talk about that. Every African-American, every African-American female should be having, you know, saying some type of uh, high caliber compact weapon in their purse. Absolutely. I, I, I couldn't agree with I, you more. I say, I say 40 or better. Nine millimeter. Oh, I did you the forty five. That's that's cliche. You need forty or better, mm. and, and, okay. it needs, and it needs to be compact. You talk that three eighty stuff. Three eighty. You know what I'm saying? You go to use that against somebody that's got a good, that's got a good leather jacket. It ain't going through it. If they got a real good, uh, uh, uh really, um, well made leather jacket, that three eighty ain't going through it. Okay, tell me which one is going through it, 40 or 45? <laughs> because I may have, need to rethink about this. So you said 40 or better? Uh, you I would I would say get you get you a good sub 40. When I say sub, I mean compact, small, a a, a, a small 40. Okay. Thank you, you know, King. I appreciate that. Lacing my boots right now because I've been searching. Something that's easily concealed. Okay. When I say sub, I mean easily concealed. Okay. And, and um, <clears throat> you hear that? This is something that I said, and that's something that I've said on this, uh, that, I, that I've said on Fred's show previously. And I think it's really when it important you, when it comes to. Uh, go ahead. I'm sorry. Go ahead. No, I'm listening to you. I just said it's important. I agree. When it comes to these uh, anti Second Amendment laws or whatever. African Americans need to know that these laws are, you know, they may say that, okay, well, there's there's crime in Chicago, there's crime in New York, there's crime in Georgia, there's crime in Maryland, there's crime in California, whatever, whatever. No, these DBC. laws are targeted against us. Yes, so I agree. Who do you, you, who you think they're going to search for these um for these guns? Who do you think they're going to pull over on the Jersey Turnpike? Who do you think they're going to turn on I forty? Who do you think they're going to turn on I ten? Who do you think they're going to mess with? They're going to mess with us. Who do you think Scott, uh, a stop and frisk was was tailored towards? Tailored towards us. So when they when they try to put these laws in effect, it should um, it shouldn't be the white folk. It's because it's majority white folk that go and say, "Oh no, you can't take our AR 15s You can't take our AK forty seven. You can't take, mm-hmm. you can't take that." Mm-hmm. And there's no black folk out there. You know, well, you know, it is, but it's, it's it's a minority black folk. It should it should be a majority black folk, not white folk. Majority black folk. Out there fighting against the, it's, it's the majority black folk that's um, storming uh, California when they come up with these um, asinine laws mm-hmm. that are are that, that started with the Black Panthers, not white people. It should be us. Mm-hmm. Great. Uh, what the Bible say? We perish for a lack of knowledge. Absolutely. And definitely agree. And and. It, and and you were saying earlier, and I said this before, we need our own party. We need to stop running behind. Okay, we can't fool with it. We can't fool with the Republican Party because we can't we can't fool with a party that will side with white supremacists. On and on the on, on the other hand, we can't fool the Democratic Party because we can't fool with a party that will tell us you know, will act like that we owe them their vote, but then all, but at the same time they take away our rights and then uh do other stuff that is is uh is not conducive to our progression, like uh the child support system. Yes. Uh, 
Yeah, it's like a whole lot of stuff, man. So I'm, I'm not going all there, but, but you get what I'm saying. We get it. We definitely, I definitely, and thank you because, like I said, we've been shopping for okay. guns, we've been shopping for pistols, and that knowledge is definitely, you know, going to heart. I just told my sister, like, you heard that because we just was looking at guns. So thank you. We appreciate you. I appreciate your support. You know, thank you for just, you know, tuning in. Yeah. We need our own party, and we, yes. we need to strengthen our own selves. So I'm out. Appreciate you. Raquel, I appreciate you. I appreciate you. You sure know how to get a nigga off the phone. Excuse me. You sure know how to get a person off the phone. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm like, nigga, get off the phone. We do it every night. It's like, man. It's, it's but a- I do want to say something because somebody asked the question uh-huh. and I don't want to forget it uh-huh. about how was it to go to Egypt. Yeah, for sure. And- I wrote it down. But go ahead. Yeah. Go to Egypt. Mm-hmm. Um, I was blessed. I said, I was laughing. I said, see, coronavirus, it didn't stop the, you know, God was working with the, the Aquarius and the, and the Capricorns because we got to celebrate our birthday. So I was really, really fortunate, really blessed to get to go to Egypt for my birthday this year. And it was amazing. And not only was it amazing, it was so culturally just shocking just to see it up close and personal and to see that not only all of the history books has been lying to us and we already know that, but to see it in person and to see our skin on all of those tombs and on all of those artifacts and see our, our lips and our noses all shot off because they're trying to take away our history was very, very powerful. And, you know, shout out to the people that are there, they're, you know, Arabic, you know, the Arabic people that were there. As soon as I got there, uh, while I was out the plane, they said, welcome queen, y'all welcome home. You know, wow. you guys, your people are the original people. Wow. You know, they were saying that to us, like your people, the original people, your people built this. And mm-hmm. it was really powerful. The, the pyramids was like literally so much energy and you got to get out in the world. You got to see what's going on because that's when you become worldly. That's when you become culture. That's why I can fight and box, but I'm still a happy soul. And that's how I'm so blessed because I get to see how fortunate we are. I get to see what our greatness really looked like. I've never been to no place on this earth and I've been to 27 countries. Mm. Um, I've been to, I think, five continents that didn't love us, that we weren't there that we weren't a dominating force. So it's like, understand your greatness, understand how dope you really are and understand that we everywhere, you know, like we everywhere, just go out there and see it. We everywhere from Japan to Africa, to Thailand, to, you know, you name it, we there. Our history is there, our art is there, our culture is there. You gotta get out here and see the world. I couldn't agree with you more. And uh, Andre Griffin says she's killing this interview. I'm supporting whatever she do for now on. I appreciate you, Dre. I'm at five, Thank five, six. <laughs> Thank you. I appreciate you. I love that. Thank you. Raquel is quality that I've seen back in the Black Panther era. Respect. Hashtag respect. Yeah, you get. Uh, I'm gonna send your sister some people to interview with because honestly, I'm not gonna even lie to you. Like uh, a part of the reason why Carissa Shield got real, real popular for real, for real. Because she ran through the gamut with all the like the people you see in here, um, it's like a uh, a nestle of us. And, and, okay. and, and I'll send your I'll send your uh, sister of, of some contacts that she can contact, and, and she can wean her way through which one she likes. Don't like. Yeah, Thank you. we appreciate that. Like all we appreciate time. that. All the time. That was fun. I like fucking with him. I like fucking with him. He don't like soft shit. You know what I mean? He don't like soft. What's up, man? What you got? <laughs> like, baby boy come on man <laughs> uh, I know what I was going I'm like eh, okay mm-hmm. yeah. yeah she's gonna see now Raquel's gonna think I'm all sweet <laughs> and kind and tender mm-hmm. she needs to know the, who the real me is <laughs> well, 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 well she from San Francisco she from Hunters Point right no Hunters Point is New yeah, York you're Point. Right. no Hunters Point is San Francisco yeah. oh San Francisco oh yeah she from Hunters mm-hmm. Point you know you're right you're correct yes Hold on. I want, I want to clear something up real quick, Rock. Hold on real quick. So where are you originally from? I'm from San Francisco, Hunters Point. I don't know if you heard right. that. Nickname yeah, I know he's my people. He called me Rock. That's what my family called me. So he already my folks. That's like, we my people. So we go just, you know, chop it up. But yeah, I'm from Hunters Point. I'm from San Francisco. Um, I grew up on Harbor Road. Um, so it's like San Francisco, Hunters Point, and then Harbor Road inside of there. But, you know, I ain't no gangbanger or nothing. You know, changed my life. <laughs> <laughs> no, <laughs> you know, yeah. No, you you was born in the Bay. Yeah, don't I got the Bay swag? Can't you hear it in me? No, I ain't from San Diego. I don't, I don't know why. <laughs> don't like that. I don't know. Originally, though. No, I didn't hear you. What'd you say? I thought you was from San Diego originally. 
They don't make them like me in San Diego. You better put some respect uh, on the pretty beach. I'm from the Bay, okay? I'm from San Francisco. I moved to San Diego four years ago because my coach was here. And if y'all want to hear a short story of how I got here, long story short, I trained in San Francisco. I was under a different coach. The coach up and moved and closed the gym and didn't tell us nothing. I was in Poland with Team USA. I got back. I hit my homeboys up like, hey, y'all, what y'all doing? Let's go to the gym. They're like, the gym closed, Kale. I'm like, stop playing. No lie. The coach up and left the gym and left us all kind of like some little boxing orphans. We fin together, found the gym. We was grinding it out. My coach that I'm with now is a four-time Olympic coach. Shout out to my coach, Bashir Abdullah. Um, I kind of went wild one time at a tournament, y'all, because I told y'all God ain't done with me yet. And I kind of mushed somebody in their face at the tournament. I was a little bit, y'all know, whatever. Because some people be playing in boxing and I don't be really playing, but that's another story. So anyway, he called me like, what's wrong with you? Why you lose that fight and why you tripping? And long story short, that materialized into him saying, you know, I'll train you, but you have to come to San Diego. I used to go back and forth. And he said, are you trying to go to the next level? You need to come out here or you need to find another coach. So I packed my bags, left my boyfriend, left my family, showed wow. up at his house, quit my job. Boom. I've been here ever since. That's how I'm in San Diego. And then my sister came, my nephew came in and it's sunny. I like it. <laughs> but I'm coming to LA next year. So I'll be in LA next year. All right, right on. So, yeah, we definitely going to connect when you get down here. I yes. like that, you know. I always tell people when they come on the come on the show here, and it's been proven already, if you look at all of the guests that's been here, if you represent us, then we represent you. So, if you represent our people properly, you'll see what we did for Errol Spence Jr.'s career. you see what we did to Deontay Wilder's career. And the same thing that. for... Um, I'm one of the real ones. Like I'm us. I'm for us. <laughs> no, and I'm not. No, but no, no. Seriously, like I'm, I'm one of them, and I carry myself in a certain way because I understand that I got a lot of young women and a lot of young men looking up to me, you know. And I got a lot of people that's going to be inspired by my story because I didn't build this from the ground up. And you know, I believe in myself, but more importantly, you know, like. I'm dope in real life. Like I got my nonprofit organization. You can go back and ask my hood what I'm about. I do fight like a girl every year. I do hoops and haircuts at home. And this is all out of pocket. I'm not funded. Me and my sister started our nonprofit way before boxing because it's important we want to give back because we didn't have that growing up. You know, like where I'm from, well, most of my friends have been murdered. You know, a lot of my friends is on drugs now. And I don't always talk about that because I'm not going to allow them to paint me as the angry black woman or the, you know, the sad, sorry, sorry story. Oh, you just a poor black. Y'all not going to paint me like that. I'm a queen and they're going to respect me like a queen mm -hmm. in the ring and out the ring. But it's real. It ain't no fake. It ain't no plan. You know, it might look pretty, but you don't get it. it, it gets, it's real out here. I just so happen to be kind of cute. So people just don't understand, you know, <laughs> but, you know, it, but it'll be all. Not you know, but seriously, you know, I'm here. I'm I'm gonna be here, and I'm gonna represent us to the best of my ability at all times. I like that. Keep on talking that shit. You gonna mess around and have you a boyfriend in L.A. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just saying, I'm single. <laughs> hey, isn't it funny how every beautiful woman that comes into the barber shop is single, dog? Raquel, you included. I have brought in some of the most beautiful women in the world on this show. You included. Everybody is single, dog. Everybody. Yeah. Is. That's crazy. Like, one of my black kings that I'm just saying. You know, <laughs> and, and and you know, like to be honest, and it's I know a lot of dope guys, uh -huh. but I realize that like right now I'm on my grind, and a lot of people don't understand my lifestyle, and they all think it's all sweet until it's like. Do you want to go out to eat? Hell no, I want to eat. I'm hungry. I'm cutting weight. I'm angry. <laughs> and then, you know, and a lot of a lot of men ain't gonna understand that. And and in order to be in a relationship, you gotta be able to compromise and mm -hmm. you gotta be willing to work towards it. And right now I'm working towards me. Mm -hmm. I ain't right. So I know that's right. Now, right? I didn't hear you. What'd you say? <laughs> I said you're talking directly to me now, right? I am. <laughs> <laughs> hey, no, listen, just, I, I competed, so you know I, I understand what the lifestyle is about. So when you cut and wait, I, I got you. You got me. I got you. I know how to handle. I know how to handle you during the, during that time. You can fight. You know how to fight. Yeah, this nigga don't. I fight. do. <laughs> no, you, and I ain't talking about boxing. You know how to fight because you ain't got to know how to box, but you got to know how to fight. Because I had to dump a boyfriend because he didn't know how to fight. I'm like, look, we start yeah, fighting. Yeah, you don't know how to fight. You know how to Somebody's gonna put hands on you. I put hands and feet on people. That's what I'm saying, stuffing them out. <laughs> uh, yeah, everything. Yeah, no, but uh, 
I'm, I'm not a violent person though. You know, I'm just here to protect my people. But uh, back, back on, on the business though. So in terms of like your platform, I know you said you were getting ready to start start getting your social media uh, going and starting a platform. Fred is a great person to talk to about that, about growing your profile and your business. And he doesn't charge that much either. So, you know, I should have told you to get with him. And my cut is only 5% for it. <laughs> I got you. No, I got I like you. I'll your be on 95. Like <laughs> right. Up. <laughs> but after and I hope you what know what business ventures are you looking to jump into? Um, I didn't hear you say it one more time. So after boxing's all said and done in the next couple of years, like you said, you'll retire pretty soon. You know, after you get some more belts and some more money. What are you going to parlay that money into? Like, what are you going to do with it? What business ventures will you be jumping into? So right now, um, I just started my athletic line. It's called the PB brand. Um, I spend it after my name, um, Pretty Beast. And for the men, it's Pure Beast. And I'm one of the first only, you know, I'm one of the only black women with athletic line. And um, I started my line because initially I really wanted to get signed by Nike. And then God spoke to me one time in my dream and said, why are you waiting for Nike to approve you? You are, you dope yourself, you know, create your own. So I decided like, I don't need Nike's approval. I approve me. You know, I put my own self on. I'm going to create something that represents me and represents my culture. And that's how I started my brand. So the PB brand, um, I just finished the first um, photo shoot and the website is getting wrapped up. It's going to be fully launched in about two weeks or so. Um, I'm going to definitely be working hands on with my nonprofit organization. It's called Ladies in Power. The information will all be on my social media handles. Um, and then I'm also, you know, I'm investing in and I'm handling my business. So it's like I got a couple other things that I'm working on, but I'm really excited about my nonprofit organization. I'm very excited about the athletic line and um, excuse me, I'm excited just for the future and mm. just kind of looking to dibble and dabble in a couple different things. And so I'm blessed. What's the name of the company? Um, it's the PB brand. Um, so you can follow it under it's the PB brand. So it's the Pretty Beast brand. And the men, they go by the Pure Beast because we all beast. And the brand, the brand is really about looking good, feeling good, and beasting at whatever you do and not allowing somebody to put you in a box. Because a lot of times people say, oh, you're pretty. Why you fight? Because I can. I can do whatever I want to do. <laughs> and I don't have to allow how I look or, you know, my sex to dictate what I do with my life. Yeah. I heard the business the first time. I just wanted you to give you another chance to say it on the platform so everybody Thank can take a chance. <laughs> y'all rock, rock, rock with me out here. I love y'all. Thank y'all. Oh, they going to fuck yes. with you heavy. Trust Thank me. Yeah. Trust, Trust me. me. Yeah. Trust me. As long as you represent us, we're going to represent you well. Mm -hmm. And so far, and I think it's been about a, about an hour so far, you've been doing a great job of representing yourself and representing you. us. So this gives that. us a chance to know you better separate from the boxing once we know who you are as a person then we can back you up in your career absolutely and you seem to, be doing, you seem to be doing well you know what i mean Thank uh you. So a, question, a question about the boxing though so after you and uh the other three girls that are at the top of the division are done fighting will you and clarissa finally bury the hatchet um honestly I don't really have no issues with old girl. I, I really want to fight you, but I have no hate towards you. I have no real issue towards you. You speak ill on me. You do all of that. And by nature, you know, I'm a fighter. So I'm not going to let nobody disrespect me and lie on me, but I have no issue with you, home girl. Like what people don't really realize, and this is all a factual story. You can go and ask her, like when she went to the Olympics, I was asking Clarissa, like, hey, you want me to braid your hair? You want me to do your hair? Like you finna be in front of the world to see. Like I'm not a hater by nature. Like I never had to be a hater. I never been like that. So I wanted to comb Clarissa hair for the first games. Like you finna had a world looking at you. Make sure your hair is dope. Oh. Clarissa told me, now nah, I'm gonna have the team manager go get my hair done. Like I'm a girl from the hood and I tell you I'm finna braid you and hook you up and you tell me you finna like you don't understand like what kind of person I am. I'm not a hater like that. So I don't have no personal issues, but you're not going to disrespect me. You're not about to lie on me. You're not trying to you're not about to tank my character because people love me. Mm. You know, then like you're not about to do that. So anytime you see me speak it out or whatever, it's because ain't nobody about to throw dirt on my name, especially when it's undeserved. But in regards to something personal, like I said, you respect me, I'm gonna respect you. But you know what I'm saying? Like I'm gonna get at you whatever way you get at me. So to get respect, you gotta give respect, period. Now, you know, so take my hat off to her. Kudos to you. You got two gold medals, you got all, that's great. But you're not gonna belittle me. You're not gonna talk dirt. You're saying down on me or make it seem like I'm ducking you or I'm lying on you. Like, come on, girl, I don't got no reason to that. So why are you talking all that? Talk about how when we was in China, you lost that fight. I'm telling you, pick your head up, man. 
Like, what is you doing? You know what I'm saying? Like when we in London, I'm trying to comp- help you comb your hair. When my coach pulled me to the side and I'm telling you like, yo, stay tight out here. You know what I'm saying? Stay focused on your goals. Like you're not going to speak about all that. So when you speak on me, speak on me. Speak on all of it. If you're going to talk about me, then talk about me. And just keep it 100. That's all I'm saying. Because everything I'm saying is not only just talk, it's facts. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like, this is this is really what happened. Like, I'm in London telling her, like, yo, don't let these people, you know what I'm saying? Like, it was a lot of people hating on her on the team and all of that. And I'm like, man, stay focused. You're about to make history. Like, I'm not no hater. Because what's for me is for me. God got me. I've been blessed. I'm here. I'm going to keep shining no matter what. So I don't have to hate on nobody. Mm-hmm. Nice. Right on. Okay, so in terms of uh, boxing folks, now, not the current boxers, so I know it's always tough for somebody to say that because of your competitive spirit, but who's your favorite female boxer of all time? Lucia Riker is my favorite of all time. Um, oh, I just like her. That's mine too. Yeah, she's my favorite. I thought she was a beast. Um, she called me one time, and I don't really never fan out for nobody, but I low-key was fanning out like, ah, Lucia <laughs> called me. Um, I, I just thought she was really dope. Um, and, and she's my favorite of all time. I really got a lot of um respect for Christy Martin because it was her watching her under them Tyson undercards where I literally used to get like goosebumps yeah. watching her and be super excited. She had them little pink shorts on and she was badass and she used to be doing her thing. So I really liked her. Mm-hmm. And those were two of the women that really kind of sol- you know, solidify for me, like that's gonna be me. And them, them two are my favorites. Mm-hmm. Right on. Uh, quick question because somebody was looking for your IG again. What, what's your Instagram? So my Instagram is ms period Raquel Miller R A Q Q E L M I L L E R. So Miss period Raquel Miller ms period Raquel Miller. Facebook is Raquel Miller. Um, my athlete page is there, and I'm on Twitter under Miss Pretty Beast ms Pretty Beast. All spelled out. Right on. All right. Now, is, is there any? Will, will you hurry fighter? up, nigga? You not man. <laughs> I like you to be getting all of the juice. <laughs> <laughs> I got good shit. You know know. I'm not just gonna be talking about boxing shit. She, we need to know who she is. Niggas as a gonna be bad. I got she, niggas she, ready she to be men. Niggas putting their fists up at me and shit. <laughs> like, nigga. <laughs> uh, hold on. I just got. I got like two more quick questions. You got though. one more question, so, nigga. <laughs> It, 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 they go together though they oh, go together all right, all right. so since, you, since you're from the bay and i know we got some of my brothers in here from the bay at least four or five of them who's your favorite bay rapper <sighs> mac dre mac dre in the bay like you know shout out to mac dre um i, I really love i just you know I, and i ain't gonna lie i was like a little younger i didn't really know about mac dre but he had so much charisma and charisma. he had so much swag and I missed y'all. I was supposed to go to this party one night. And I don't know why I didn't go, but he turned it out. And he literally, the club was over at two and they was partying at five o'clock in the morning. And after that, I had to put some respect on his name and like start listening. And then, you know, the this and then it was just crazy. So I think between Mac Dre, you know, you got too short. Um, and I just recently listened to somebody called Larry, Larry Jones. Is that his name? Larry, somebody. He was all right too, but Mac Dre is my favorite. And then... Yeah, probably too short. Yeah, I think. All right, right on. Well, I, I appreciate you giving me a minute to chop it up with a you. A minute, I know nigga. Brothers, How about 15, nigga? <laughs> Thank you so much. I appreciate yeah. it. Yeah. 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 I'm going yeah, so to uh, hit you up. Fred going to send me your number right now, and I'm going to shoot you a text. I ain't got it. I ain't got it. Nigga, I ain't got it. Okay. <laughs> That's my favorite line. Fred, Fred, shoot it mine. Because I want you to, uh, Lucia Riker actually trained with me doing kickboxing in my gym several times too. So, Where's your gym? Um, yeah, you can come down here. Say it again. Is it LA? Yeah. Your gym yeah, yeah. is in LA? In LA on question night. Yeah. Yeah, you should just like shoot me a message when I'm in LA. I'll come in and I'll say what's up. Yeah. I'll be yeah, coming to LA. I'm cool. just in LA. Wait, I made a song, y'all. So I made a song. I need to talk oh, about this. You wanna right play now. it? You wanna play I it? Made, wait, I don't we don't have it right now. Oh, I don't know if I have because, it. But I'm gonna try to if you okay, so let y'all hear my song. He knows, I, I heard it. I heard it. Okay. I made a song, and my song was dope. And it's not, I ain't rapping or singing, y'all. I'm a boxer. I got to stay in my lane. But I be listening to E.T., and I be listening to C.T. Fletcher, and uh-huh. I'm really just about inspiring and empowering my people. So I made, like, an, a motivational type of song, and I want to use it as my anthem. But it's super dope, y'all. And I stayed up all night making it. And I just really believe in creating your own lane. Mm-hmm. And so I felt like I was listening to C.T., and I was listening to Eric Thomas, and I was like, 
it ain't no women that I can listen to. So I was like, you know what? I'm going to create it. I'm going to be that woman. So when y'all see my motivational album come out, holla at your girl. I yeah, got we're it. Gonna support it. Now we're we going we gonna to support it. I, yes. We are. We, I got we us. Support everything. Yep. Yes. So before I go, I'm going to let y'all hear some of my song. <laughs> Later, DB. Nigga, bye, nigga. Bye. Peace, nigga. Peace, nigga. I love you, man. Peace, nigga. God. We, we are family here because because what happened is during quarantine, uh, first of all, boxing conversation with Reggie Owens, Raquel, if you need an entanglement, holla at me. You don't open up Pandora's box after you said that shit. They, oh, man. Hey, Hunters. Oh, oh, here you go. Here you go. Here you go. Uh, 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 Frisco Fried or Auntie's April? Auntie April's, her her waffles are pretty dope. Uh-huh. And if I gotta pick E40 or Mac Dre, I'm picking Mac Dre. Mac Dre, you answered that. But already. E40 is cool. I, I yeah. fuck with 40, but I'm oh. rocking with um the hit Raquel. Raquel, welcome to the barbershop, Queen. Any thoughts on the news that Viacom has terminated their business relationship with Nick Cannon after I he, do. After oh, I he refused to apologize like Deshaun Jackson did? I just heard about this right now. And I think that this is how we come together. And we say, screw y'all. Screw your platform. We're going to create our own. Because don't be mad at him for telling the truth. Like in Nick Cannon is super talented. He got wilding out. You got your following. Take your platform and ownership. 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 That's why I created the Pretty Beast brand. That's why I do what I do. That's why I refuse to let anybody tell me out. I'm going to do it myself. Because ownership. And that's how you pass down generational wealth to your family. So... Screw them. We all need to get behind Nick Cannon. We all need to go and follow Nick Cannon and say, we got you. We support you. Where do we pull our dollars at? How do we create a platform for you? How do we buy our own station and not know BET because it's not black owned anyway? And it's putting bull crap to our communities and to our people. So I'm pissed off about it. I'm fired up about it. And I think that this is when we make our black dollars count. This is when we say, nope, not us. Y'all want to shut him off? Then we're not going to spend with y'all company. We're not going to watch none of y'all shows. We don't want to see none of y'all trash reality shows. Mm -hmm. No. If you're an influencer and you ain't got nothing to influence to get up out the way. Right. There's too many people in the way right now. Yeah. Period. If you're not a push in the culture, you're not keeping it real, you got to go. Oh, facts. Big facts. I couldn't agree with you more. I skipped the super chat. If I did, put it in the comment section. I apologize. We'll get to the super chat. Then we'll get to the phone call. This is fire. Salute to my bro, Barbershop Conversation, and the Queen Champ, the Pretty Beast, yeah. Smith Miller. You got to go on Blue Blood show during the Blue day. Blue Blood, holla. Hit me up. Send you me a message. Here. Let's I'll go. give you her sister's email. Like you, I'm telling you, you're gonna be a rock star in this month. I'm telling you, dog. I'm not lying. You're gonna be a rock star. What's up, town? Go ahead. Man, what up, Fred? Uh-huh. Hey, what's up, Raquel? Hey, what's up? Just wanted to show you some Bay Area love, you know, coming from the other side of the water, East Oakland's finest, you know. Okay. Uh, you know, I know you yeah, I know you through uh Kareem and uh Troy. So That's you know, I went to go find Frisco, you know, uh, at the um, at the, uh, the hotel at the top of the hill. So you know, I already met you a few times. Okay, so, you know, I'm just glad that you finally getting your shine. And uh, Fred is the perfect person to blow you up because Fred did made a couple of stars out of uh, everybody. <laughs> he helped Fred helped me. Fred helped my channel grow. He taught me. Fred taught me some things. He helped helped me become a better a better interviewer and stuff. So Fred helps people. He's down for the cause. You know what I'm saying? Me and Fred don't always see eye to eye, but Fred is a real nigga out here. He's fighting for us. Mm. So, you and know, well, this is the perfect person to blow you up. And you know, Raquel, I fuck with you because you from Frisco. One of my favorite uh, albums is the Hitman, Solo Creep. Mm. The I album, you know, I so, you know, I know all about Skull City. So, you know, mm-hmm. and I got a lot of family up there. You know what I'm saying? So I know all about Frisco. And I'm glad that you're getting the shine because you deserve the shine because you're a beautiful black woman. I love how you represent our people. And if anybody don't know the Bay, we culture, we, we, we about the culture. We about the family. We about our people. You know what I'm saying? We about having stuff. So, you know what I'm saying? I really hope that fight between you and Carissa. It has to happens. happen. I'm, I'm, I'm going to be torn. I'm going to be torn, Raquel. I will be at the fight. But you know what? I, I got to keep it Bay Area. I'm going to be fucking with you. You know what I'm saying? I got to keep it Bay Area. I got to keep it Bay Area. I got to yeah. keep it Bay Area because I, I got to. I'm going to have to roll with you. Know. Rissa, 
but it's 510 to the 415. <laughs> Period. <laughs> and then Fred, check your email. My sister sent you over the anthem. So before I go, you got to let the people okay. hear it too. Right, right, right. But I appreciate you. Thank you. You know, your energy. I'm sending you nothing but love, light, and abundance. And I just appreciate this. The energy is just definitely good. And I'm just super just thankful to hear so many people coming on, talking about us, supporting each other, and us having each other's back because that's what's really missing. And it really feel really hard out here when you grinding and you pushing and you're trying to do so many things and you feel like your people not there having your back and support. So thank you guys. I appreciate y'all. Appreciate it. Hey, hey, Fred, I'm going to go on to check out because I know a lot of people want to talk yeah, to her. But man, demons. real talk. Yeah. I appreciate you for blowing this beautiful black woman up. Yeah, we, hey, Fred, you. holla at me when this shit is over. I'm going to be up late <laughs> all right, tonight. So hit, sure. the, hit, the, hit, hit my phone, bro. All right, for sure. All right. All right, peace. Oh, man. See, we got some real niggas here. This, this, you read this here. Why don't you read this out loud? <laughs> <laughs> just, just, just went to your IG, Miss Millie, and you are nice, nice. I risk it all. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> Drew tight. Drew tight. Hey. Tell me what you got, little mama. Show me what you got, bird lady. Hey. I put that in. Like, show me what you got. Actually, I had to yes, put it Go ahead. Go ahead, Drew. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. His name is Drew. Hi, Drew. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, he gets he gets that Drew. So, so, young lady, yes, you pack a deuce deuce on your date, and you got hands. I swear <laughs> to God, all you had to say was, "I have a blade in my mouth." I had a blade in my mouth, and I swear to God, you're from the Bronx. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not that clever with the blade, so I'm just gonna pull a 22 out and bust. If you, it. Were, if you had a blade and you rock Tim's, I said, nah, 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 nah. You from the Bronx? I, Tim's, I love New York. I used to always tell my mom I was supposed to be. I thought I was supposed to be from New York, but I love New York. Like I've been in New York a couple times. I got a lot of love for New York. I got to next fight. Time, it. Ne ne next time you in New York. You gotta hit me up so we can go out on a gym date. I ain't gonna say a date date because you know I, I, my my hands are full right now. Okay. But um, you know we can we can, we can go on, we can go on a date. We can go on a gym date and we could jump some rope for about eight rounds. Now I mean we can hit the bag. Yeah, I, mean, I be training people, so I'm gonna train you, and I want to okay, see okay. Well, you can last. I, I, I ain't gonna, I ain't gonna need much help, but um, right. yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. You know we can skip some rope. We can hit the bag. We could talk some boxing. That'll be pretty dope. Okay. You know what I mean? Um, but I feel what you're saying, man. Yo, you in the right place, man. Because you know we're going to push you hard. I'm telling you, she has right no place. idea. You have no idea. You have no idea, you have no idea where you at right now. Don't be surprised. Oh, yeah. Don't be surprised if that Clarissa Shields match happened uh, yeah, next spring or some yeah. shit. Yeah, because we, yeah, we love both of y'all. We love both of y'all. And we want to keep circulating that black money. You know what I mean? Like mm -hmm. I tell everybody, stop stop going to fight these Mexicans, dog. Stop thinking you need a Mexican to sub substantiate your career. You know what I mean? Oh, yeah. Fight this, fight your brother. You know what I mean? Go sell out in Maryland and go sell out in Virginia. Yeah. You know what I mean? I'm telling you. Jewish people. Don't I don't want to speak because I know you, you got to do business, but um, right. fuck the but ball. You know what I mean? Go sell out this 10,000 arena. You get the split. Y'all motherfuckers are happy. Man, fuck around. Y'all gonna have a good trilogy. Mm -hmm. We're gonna, we gonna promote that shit, man. Mm -hmm. We're gonna promote that shit. We could have you in there fighting lat Latinas uh, that look like 12-year-old boys. You dig? <laughs> <laughs> That's the oh, bullshit. Yeah. Yeah. That was yeah. some bullshit. She came up out that fucking robe. I said, yo, they doing mm. cross-gender matches now? What the fuck is that? Alejandro? Her? Yeah. Yeah. Alejandro, Alejandro. What the fuck was that? In there looking like Jim DeAnville Nine Hard. Remember that nigga? And Jesus it was really Christ. sad. And it was really sad. Like, and let's talk about it. Like, and it was really sad the way that Oscar De La Hoya handled that. Like, you got yeah. this black queen in here fighting this fighter. You know what I'm saying? They had whatever she got going on. And y'all know it wasn't cool. Y'all know that she tested dirty and you're not going to get this lady back her titles. Like, come on now. 
And that's that's yeah, what I'm saying. We don't have nobody back here supporting us and loving on us. Like we don't have no fight, no people that's really helping and supporting the black fighters. Like you know, nothing to take away from Clarissa, but it's a lot of us out here. You got the Tierra Browns, you got the Raquel Millers, you got the Alicia Baumgartner, you got black women that's out here putting it in day in and day out. That deserve the support, that deserve the recognition because we're not taking no days off. Mm. And that's you know what I'm saying. And that's why I'm happy to be here and happy to hear so much love and support in the building because it's needed man, and it matters. Man. She she came in the ring looking like Oscar De La Hoya. How about that hit? That was, <laughs> that was fucked up. That was fucked up. Yeah, yeah. I was looking like, yo, that that's not right. And then you know how they tried to brush it off, like, oh, we only bullying her because she gay. No, she looked like a dude. That was the problem. Dude, oh. She had a dick. She had a dick. She had a dick. She yeah. looked like she had a dick. I'm like, yo, nah, 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 nah. No homo. She needs to take those drawers off. I swear to God she had a dick. That was crazy. And yeah. then look, and then the motherfucker's gonna tell us that we crazy and we bullying her. And then she go mm -hmm. ahead and after he said, nah, he capping her so hard. He said, no, nah, no. Nah. They just they just bothering her because she gay. And no, 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 no. Yeah, she looked like she had to do with you being gay. They don't have nothing exactly. to do with you being gay. They, you they, take testosterone. They, you test and dirty. That's what it has something to do with. And you guys already know this type of stuff. My point you is, they, they tried to take it somewhere where it didn't need to go. And then when, then when she failed the test, he didn't even apologize. Then he held up to the goddamn title and didn't want to give it back to her. Mm -hmm. He wanted to give it back to her. How many months he held it on? Three or four months? Yeah, three or four yeah. months. January 10th, end uh, of May, some shit like that. Mm -hmm. Exactly. You, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. They tried to make it something else. So my thing is this, sister. That WBC shit, if you ever get your hand on the green belt, throw that shit in the trash. Thanks. Throw that shit in the garbage. <laughs> throw that shit in the garbage. Uh, throw that shit in the garbage. I'm sure you know what they're doing to Brother Deontay Wilder. And yeah. when he knocked, when he, I don't give a fuck who said, yo, he knocked that evil ass saltine, that fucking powder looking snort, that coke sniffing 300 and fucking four pound gypsy fucking piece of shit saltine cracker ass cracker. When he knocked that motherfucker head off into my lap, when he knocks that nigga head into my lap, take that green belt, throw it in the trash, piss on it. Put a piece of coal in the can, throw some lighter fluid on it, and fucking burn it. You remember when Jimi Hendrix did Voodoo Child? He said his guitar on fire. Deontay Wilder need to do that fucker, just like that. That's how. That's how disgusted I am. Mm. We know. The WBC. Oh yeah. God, fuck everything, and fuck the entire bloodline. They done killed everything. That belt don't mean shit. Matter of fact. You know why motherfuckers is mad at Floyd Mayweather on that level? He proved that the belts ain't, they don't mean shit. They don't pay the fucking bills. Yeah. You know how many, how many fighters, matter of fact, wasn't it Glenn Carf Johnson won the belt and couldn't afford the sanctioning fees and just gave it, gave the fucker right up? Mm -hmm. no, no one cares. You don't beat Roy already. You know what I'm saying? No one cares. These belts don't mean shit. We don't pay. We ain't going to pay to come see the belts. We're going to pay to come see you and Clarissa. Mm -hmm. You did? Yeah. Three, three fights. And we're going to promote that shit starting tonight. Starting tonight. We're going to tag Clarissa. We are. We are. Shit. We're going to tag. She, she understands that. Fuck, man. She understands. And, and we and you said, and it should happen. It shouldn't be about, oh, when you get a title, you get that. No. Like for what? When your, when your people was buying up all of the vacant titles. So let's talk about how your people is monopolizing the game. It's champions with these titles that you didn't go fight them. Y'all fought for the vacant titles and then sold up the game to where it's now you're telling me, oh, go fight for a title. But when the title one that I was supposed to fight for, you know, they, you know, say your people sold it up. So if your people got more people money than my promoter, then and you monopolizing the game. And then you turn around and say, oh, but I'm ducking you and go get a title. Come on now. One plus one equal two. You know what I'm saying? And if you don't really know what's going on, you would think that it looks real pretty, but from the inside out, Nah, come on now. Let's make it happen. Oh, we're going to make this happen. We're going to make this happen. Oh, sidebar, before I get out of here, your friend, Michael mm -hmm. Nunn, got a fight coming up this week. Yeah, weekend. this Saturday. Yeah, we'll we'll. Yeah, we'll yep, yep, yep. I'm, I'm going to try and get a hold of him, you know, put him on somebody, uh, channel, put him on my channel. But, you know, we're going we're gonna to promote the hell out of that, brother. But, yo, man, keep doing your thing, sis. When you're Thank in you. New York, I'm going to go follow I'll you on the gram right now. Thank I am you. Drew Titan. When you're Thank in New you. York, 
We got a gym date. Uh, gym date. Absolutely. Nothing crazy. Nothing crazy. Nothing crazy. Gym Nothing date. crazy. I'm gym that. date. Okay. I, I, I'm, I'm an old. I'm an old man. So don't 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 run me under the table. Got gotcha. you, <laughs> old man. So, okay. <laughs> For sure, your friend. Love you, brother. You. I love you too, man. Appreciate you, Kim. And Terrence Bailey, shout out to Terrence Bailey. Um, I would love to do a weapons video. So, um, Fred, if you can give um or link my manager, my sister yeah. manager, yeah. so they sure. can anybody that wants an interview or you know link up, let me know. Reach out to her, and we'll make it happen. Yeah, for sure. Can't promise you. Jay Cooley, Bud or Big EJ, choose wisely. Bud, <laughs> what do you mean? I'm Bud. Going Bud. Bud. Go with Bud. Ooh, Bud is my favorite yeah. player right now. Really? And, you know, I think, um, no, I think, okay. no disrespect to EJ. No, no, I think no, that, no, um, no disrespect. It's no disrespect. Um, you yeah. know, EJ cool me. We went to London together, so you know, I've been in camp with him. I've been in camp with both of them. I'm pretty cool. I'm pretty close with um, Bud. You know, I'm cool with EJ or whatnot, but I'm picking Bud. I think that Bud is the more diverse fighter. I think that um, he got more tools in the tool shed, mm -hmm. and I'm going with Bud. I think I honestly, and I'm taking bets. Oh, 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 I'm taking. Oh, I'm taking. I'm taking. I'm so, taking. And I'm, I'm taking, taking bets, and I won't I'm, run me my money. I'm no. I'm I'm taking all your money. I'm telling yeah, so, you right now. Oh yeah. That, oh, okay. oh yeah. I, honestly, you you want to know the God honest truth about uh, Terrence? And Terrence hates me for this. Like he like he doesn't like me at all. Is that because I think that he's Harold Miner? I don't. You know who Harold Miner is. I don't know who Harold Miner oh, is. Oh, Harold Miner is the fake Michael Jordan. So I don't. Nah, think don't don't be getting that boy like that. No, no, I think, no, I'm not getting out of like that. He ain't fought nobody. The nah, that's who nah, has he fought? Who nah, has he fought? Who has nah, he fought? But what? no, I will say this: like Bud and Foster people, like he fought. So y'all have to hide this fighter. Right? And then Bud tears him down, off. and then it's like he ain't fought nobody. But he did fight Post All. You know what I'm saying? When Post All was supposed to be the boogeyman or whatnot, then he fought. Who's that um kid that they said beat um Peterson? And gave Peterson, and they robbed him, and they gave it to him. I forget his name. Stopped him, and I don't do. He be beating these guys. He be demolishing them, stopping them. So it's just like who, who is I he, think that Bud who is underrated. One forty-seven. Well, unfortunately for him, which I wish he would have chose wisely not to resign with top rank, but that's that. But I do feel like a lot of the talent, obviously, yeah. is with PBC, and so a lot of the legacy building fights is over there. But nah, that man is out there putting in that work. I think that he's pound for pound right now. I, I, I think, think that I don't think we have a pound right now. I think, I think that um he I, I'm going with Bud. Like I said, he he my focus. I, I rock a Bud. He's one of my favorite fighters right now, and I, I like think that you know he's just do. Like who he fought besides and um Porter and Porter. You know what I'm saying? If he wanted to drop Porter, I was ready to get Porter to fight down there. Mm -hmm. So really? you know what I'm saying? I mean uh, that was I was. That was an electrified fight. Porter was in his chest that whole fight. Sean Porter was working, fight. working. Sean Porter put up a hell of a fight. It was definitely so, fighting. You know, I think that EJ, EJ edged it out, but I do think that people don't give Terrence the, the credit that Terrence deserves. He unified the whole division. I'm gonna tell you, and not everybody in the division when he moved. Come on now, get that man his props. I'm I'm giving him props for unifying at 140, 135. But now we playing varsity. Now he did good in the B's and C's and the JV and all that shit. But now you got to prove yourself. But you said one key component, and I get on Bomac all the time about that shit. We go nose to nose on this shit. You signed with that white man when all your shit was over there, and you still could have been a free agent, and you could have fought Sean Porter. Sean Porter is like the uh, the A level uh, litmus test. You know, he's a great fighter. I'm not disrespecting. Him. He's a he is as good as it can be. But you you, you know how you taste the food. You like, did you put salt in it? You understand what I'm saying? He's literally like that. You know what I mean? He's a former two-time world champion, but when he fights the Kell Brooks, the he just like Yeah. I mean, I wish that I, I wish that he would have I think that a lot of the fighters and I wish that especially the black fighters need to understand Mayweather gave us the blueprint. Mm -hmm. He gave you the blueprint on how to become a billionaire, millionaire. He gave you the blueprint on ownership. Mm -hmm. And if nothing else, when you get a name for yourself, just like you know, Drew was just talking about before he, he clicked off. Ownership is the name of the game because after a while they're not fight. They're not worried about what title you fighting. They come in to see you fight, mm -hmm. and if fighters get in a position to have ownership to where it's now, you're not waiting for nobody to sign your check. You can sign your own checks, and now you got a piece of the door. You got your fight purse. You got the ticket venue. You got the pay per view. Understanding ownership is so important. 
and understanding that you're bigger than just somebody signing your check. Don't allow nobody to be your boss once you get to that certain level. Because you believe me, you believe, believe me, you ain't nobody going to be my boss. I get to the next level. I already got Pretty Beast promotion already ready to go. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Because ownership is key. And I think that a lot of us don't have that mindset. And, I, you know. No, nah, nah, you're I, right. And, 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 and that's the one gripe I have on, on Team Crawford is that they just... They just dropped the ball on. I, I believe they put it in Bob Arum's hand, and Bob Arum was like, "Nigga, what? I got Tyson Fury and Lomachenko. You don't sell tickets outside of Omaha, so I mean, I got you on the contract. What you gonna do? What you gonna do? I got like, money, you man. Like, you know, and and like I said, those are my people. I got you know what I'm saying. Like I'm already close. To I, get that. I get that. You know what I'm saying. Like so, you know, like I said, my alliance is is rolling with them. I got nothing mm-hmm. but love and respect you for said. Team Crawford and yeah. the Omaha family. Like that, ain't been my family. You know what I'm saying. I I ain't been to camp with them. I ain't been out there. Them them is my people. But on top of that, I just think that um, I I do hope that he's able to kind of move and shake because there's a lot of fights on the other side. I, I want to get those fights. I so, will. And I, and I hope so. And maybe it's some reasons that unbeknownst to us that we don't know. And that's why he made that move. Mm-hmm. I don't know. I'm not, you know what I'm saying, in his yeah, ear so. as one of his advisors. So I don't know. But yeah, we'll move on. That's cool. Boxing conversation with Reggie Owens. Raquel, I want to link up with you. Believe that 4 5 at the dope because I don't want to get popped for squeezing on you. <laughs> hey, Jay Cooley said, You lucky. She lucky. She gorgeous. You know, Thank you. and uh, we, oh, we got Jay Cooley. Oh, Jay Cooley. What? Wasn't no killers at 140 when Bud was there. Bud fighting yes. fighters and claiming he's the greatest. Sure. So, I, and I'm gonna have to disagree with you on that one. Um, like I said, I really think that a lot of, like for example, 140 guys right now. Who we got? We got Jose Ramirez, right? He's he's good. Uh, mm-hmm. We got Jose Ramirez. Who was that? Devin Chain. With one we got Haney. Haney. Soon he'll be at 140. He's about. Yeah, we're, he's about we're, we got some names. Where they was at? Mm-hmm. Why they wasn't at 140? Why all of a sudden it take for Crawford to move up for all of them to come out of their shell? Like I said, I really hope that he really solidifies and shows people what he got at 147 because I think that dude is, you know, is very, very talented. I think he's underrated. And I think that people don't realize how strong dude is. Mm-hmm. This fool one time gave me the biggest goddamn Charlie horse. And he's so strong. He's so, he yeah, looks, me, but, and I just think that your lifestyle going to catch up to you. And I think a lot of these fighters ain't really living it. Mm. And and I think that that's going to be the difference. Like, do they not here smoking? Do they not here drinking? Do they not here getting, you know what I'm saying, crazy, you know what I'm saying, out of shape? Mm-hmm. And then your lifestyle going to show up in the second half of the fight, and I think he's going to prove a lot of people wrong. Yeah. And ain't no thing as no damn Craigslist fighters. It's a different. <laughs> like, you know what I'm saying, Jay? I ain't uh-huh. fooling with you talking about Craigslist fighters. Whatever. <laughs> I'm about to do it right now. Nah, he's not fighting the Craig. Home Depot. Home Depot. Home Depot. Whatever. Right. Come on. Whatever. <laughs> but we'll, but Next we'll question. And, <laughs> and just, oh, oh I, I blocked off the phones. Uh, I, was, I was trying to get the beam in, but he, he beamed out. But, uh, you know, j- just to speak on that uh, independent stuff, I turned down a six-figure job at ESPN to do this because yeah. I'm like, I'd rather do this, you know what I mean, exactly. and, and own what I do. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and then if you decide to leave, if they decide to fire you, then what? You got to start from where you, you know what I'm saying? You got to start from the ground. Mm-hmm. Build your own, own your own. Ownership is key because nobody can be your boss when you own it. Mm-hmm. Now nah, you're right. Can tell you how to do it or tell you what message that you want to portray or whatever you need to get to your people. What better do? What, what better way to do it than to have an ownership? Now nah, that's dead right. And you know the uh, uh, just to speak on. The, um, uh, what you were saying about Franchine Cruz, we were we wanted to thug hard for her, but she wouldn't do interviews. And I'm not saying you have to speak for her, but I was, man, I I front line for every black issue in boxing. Like it is it, for real, for real, Raquel. I'm not even gonna bullshit you. Everybody knows that they take my credentials. It's okay. I can afford a five hundred dollar ticket. Oh, I pay. You not the promoters don't pay for me anyway. You know what I mean? So I pay for my own shit anyway. And she just wouldn't do interviews, and I I was like. And it was, and that, and that was really sad to see, especially like you know, she had like some little mishaps with her hair in the interview. Mm-hmm. And I think what really pissed me off about the situation is there was so many quick people, especially us, that was so quick to tear her down. Mm-hmm. Like, come on, now she in there getting it in. Now, granted, every time I fight, I'm these braids ain't going nowhere. <laughs> but, but, <laughs> like, I ain't fooling around. 
But uh-huh. at the same time, I just really don't like when it's so hard out here, Fred. Mm-hmm. Like, you know what I'm saying? I'm talking about I done left. I done moved away from my family. I done quit jobs. You know what I'm saying? I done been homeless, homeless for boxing. Like, wow. it's so much that goes into it. Like, I don't work a nine to five. You know what I'm saying? I hustle with 24-7 because I believe in myself. I believe in my dreams. So to have, like, people that you want to believe in you and see your effort mm-hmm. t- setting and tearing you down and don't support you ain't it. So I don't understand why she didn't want to get on her platform because I was pissed off for her. And she should have spoke on it because they did her dirty as a black woman. And that's happening over and over. Like the zone ain't focused on no black fighters. The zone is focused on European girls. You know what I'm saying? Top rank ain't focused on no black women fighters. They focus on a white girl fight. You know what I'm saying? Like, so let's be real here. Let's call a spade a spade. And then you got Al Heyman who got black fighters when he don't rock with women fighters at all. So like I said, who love us? Who support us? You know what I'm saying? And I got, you know what I'm saying, the Bella, but the Bella don't have no network. Facts. Big facts. Five six six three six. What's up? How hey, you feel? How up? you feel? It's Miller time. Yes, it is. <laughs> it's Miller time. Hey, what's that? Seven eleven points in like seven seconds or some shit like that. Reggie Miller did that shit. Anyways, what's up? Yeah, we gonna we gonna ordain her the female champion of the barbershop conversation. The what? The Miss Miller <laughs> Oh no, yeah, yeah, she's fucking amazing. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, she definitely getting more calls than last night. <laughs> she, she's going, she's going solo. Yeah, solo, solo dolo, solo dolo. Yeah, she on a solo mission. You know what I mean? It's pretty deep. Can I ask you, uh, what's your walk around weight? Man, I be thick, thick. No, just play. <laughs> no. <laughs> Man, this quarantine. She know, she know how to play with y'all. She know how to play with the niggas at the barbershop. She be going to the bathroom playing Pac Man on the arcade and shit. You know, yeah, I'm yeah. Walk around at like 70, 70. On a, on, I walk around like at 70. I fight at 60 and 54. And when I'm when I don't eat too much bull crap and I like my nonsense and my cupcakes, I'm like a solid 175. If I get to 180, y'all, I'm not gonna lie at the beginning of the quarantine. I was like, yo, you is tripping. I tell my sister, like, stop making cakes, bro. Like you tripping. <laughs> I don't know. Then you see me at the park, Fred, trying to work out. Like, hold on, oh, <laughs> coming together. Yeah. But I walk around at a solid like one seventy. Um, when I, you know, pretty much, I don't like to stay at one seventy. I don't. I get too skinny. My head too big. <laughs> my forehead too big. Uh, Gotta keep. It uh, I want in on that on that uh Spence and Bud. Uh, oh yeah, I'm, Fred, she got I'm telling you, I'm running it up. She got hey, I, know, I know. I heard. Her, I heard. Her. Okay. I'm you just... know, that's. I think that's the only thing we're going to disagree on uh, in this conversation. Conversation, but no, nah, I won't end on that bit. Oh yeah, she gonna, you know, she gonna be paying we, the whole barbershop. Put the money in escrow. <laughs> and, uh, nah, she gonna be good for it. She gonna, get, she gonna get publicly shamed if she don't pay up. I'm gonna pay. I'm gonna pay. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna pay. I'm gonna pay. And I want y'all to buy some PB gear. And nah, I want y'all to do it. To be like pretty beast on me. <laughs> I want some shit like that. I want some real like yo, yeah. P- <laughs> I'm on oh, it. Oh man. Hey, Chris, you know how she gonna get the money back? How? When she when she fight Clarissa, Clarissa. Yeah, when she gets Clarissa, yeah, fact, she, fact. She'll get her money back like that. And you can bet on yourself too, little, little. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Betting okay, myself you up. Tune up fight with uh, Layla Ali before you uh, step in the ring with Cl- Clarissa Shields. Are you just ready to go ahead and do that? You yes. said what I do with tuna fight with Layla Ali. That's yeah, what you said. You know, with um, I think Layla needs to. Uh, Stay out of the game. You know what I'm saying? Like you've been retired. There's some new killers out here. Like Layla, your your legacy is solidified. Sit down. I don't really think that that fight needs to happen. I think that she's talented. I think she's dope. But I think that you know what I'm saying. That's ten years ago. Was no point. You used to lose lose situation for you for you to me. But anyways, um, I would love to fight um Hannah Gabriel's. I would love, I would love to fight whoever they put in front of me. Like, I mean, it's like let's do this. Let's figure it out. Let's put it together. If it needs to be a fight deal or whatever. It ain't that hard to make it happen. I'm right here. Yeah, but I, I think we all can agree the uh, the pay per view fight is you and uh, Clarissa Shields. So how you see that uh, playing out? So, uh, y'all got to wait. Y'all gotta wait or... to see. Um, we, you know, we game planning for it. We working towards it. Um, I think that my biggest thing is, you know, it's gonna be just my my mindset. You know, it's gonna be me being calm and sticking to my game plan. So. And that's just really it. And, and that's already been the case when we fight in the amateurs and so on. It's really just about me calming down because sometimes when I fight, I'll be real hyped up, y'all. So 
I'm not boxing them on my game, y'all. None of these girls can't see me. Clarissa, you line them up. None of them. You know what I'm saying? Like, they can't see me. My coach always tell me that. Like, when you fight your fire, can you do your thing? Can't nobody see you. So, you know, I'm doing my part. I'm looking forward to that that opportunity. And I'm looking forward to shocking a lot of people because I think they're sleeping on me and it's time for them to wake up. Right. And before I want to no, shout you, out. You, 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 oh, I'm no, sorry. You can't see a uh, UK on Um. Y'all got to watch and see, but that's always the plan. That's that's the, always the goal with anybody I get in the ring with, to be honest. But it's going to be even more sweet. Because don't that mean like if you get a knockout, then you get like more points on the bet? Yeah, so I got to I gotta guess I want all my money. I got to run it up. I'm like, give me my money. <laughs> <laughs> I got to run it up. But, but that's always. Money, like, fuck with my emotions smoking. What's up? We got, we got somebody else on the line for it? No, it's just me. I'm hearing a lot of feedback. No, nah, that's your, but, uh, nah, that's your uh, Obama uh, phone. Uh, yes, Queen, you, you, you have the Barbershop Conversations title now, so you will be representing that at your next fight. Thank and you. And you got to get that belt presented. Yeah. Yeah. Right for you? Absolutely. Okay. All right, don't be no stranger now. Welcome to the community. Thank you, guys. I appreciate yeah, they're talking what you have. Here. Patty Dean, the beautiful Patty <laughs> Dean. And uh, see, see, see how we support her? Um, Patty, she, I appreciate she has you. a product. She has a product too that we all support. Uh, we gonna support you as well. We gonna support you as well. You know, I, mean, so I can uh, support you, Patty. I appreciate you. You know, shout you out on my page and you know support, support. So, Patty, thank you. You're beautiful. I appreciate you supporting my line and just you know showing me love. I appreciate you, beautiful. Send me your link to your product and I can support you right back. And uh, without further ado, we have Pastor Usher Deacon three hundred five in the building. And uh, what's up, man? Too blessed to be stressed and highly favored. favored. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> How's everybody doing? Hi, blessed. Uh, I, 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 I just want to let you know something, Fred. Yes. Just say thank you, Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> oh, we had a conversation last night, Raquel. We had a conversation last night. The nigga was talking so long, Raquel. I had I had to play coming to America. Randy Watson and his mother. <laughs> <laughs> you are hey, for real. Thank God that he he showed up tonight. You didn't think God was gonna show up, but he showed up in the oh. form of that woman. <laughs> <laughs> because I said, because I said, oh, she needs a preface face. So, anyways, I said he was talking about God. How I give God the glory. So I said, fuck that shit. Jesus is hosting. Jesus is hosting the show tomorrow, and she's and he's interviewing Raquel Miller, <laughs> Marvin Gaye, Prince, Michael Jackson, all the motherfuckers. Jesus is Jesus is in charge of everything. Fuck the bullshit. So anyway, that's what it's. So it, it, it's his show now. Go ahead, go ahead, Triple OG. Yeah, I mean, uh, but, but hey, past that, Shadiq To your chagrin, my brother, he did show up. Hey. Look on the side of you on the other side of that screen. He showed up. I met her. I met her. I met her. I met her. So I, All right. Uh, and and I love how she how she um responds to to our God and, and let you know that He spoke to her. You mm -hmm. see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. God speaks to us, my brother. He showed up in the form of that queen sitting right the other side. It just made me smile all over. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I have to remind my this brother nigga, Fred. This nigga giggling, God, Raquel. Did you hear this nigga giggling? <laughs> Shoulders bouncing and shit. I felt that shit. The nigga giggling. Look, you hear that shit? That nigga, a man can't make a man sound like this. Oh, you a woman, nigga. He said sweet on the phone with a nigga. See, you don't talk like that. Uh, go ahead. Anyway, talk to them. Talk to this yeah. beautiful woman, man. Okay, and, and another thing she said, bruh, she chose the right name. I keep telling you, Chance Crawford is no joke, bruh. I done told you this. Pound for pound, the best. Amen. Let the, the church say right <laughs> You know what I mean? Mm. Pound for pound. You know what I'm saying? Uh, uh, until proven otherwise, he is the pound for pound champion right now. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? You got mm -hmm. to give it to him. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? I don't think it's there is proven. a pound for pound. Undisputed. This man has, he, he done put the work in. Okay. We can't take that from him. You know Can what I mean? you get a job it's for your perfect? Do you get a raise? Gonna it's it's going gonna, it's gonna to take a fighter to take that status from him. Until then, hey, hey, do you, let, him wear, let him wear his crown. Pastor Usher, Deacon 305. Do, yes, you get, do you get a raise at your job for having perfect attendance in middle school? 
<laughs> I'm just asking the question. There you go. Come on, there you go. He's still missing 140. Yeah. Like, does, does, the high, does the high school quarterback at 45 still get every woman? I'm just asking. Well, I'm asking. I'm asking I, for people I, in the back. I, 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 can, I, I can speak with me. I, 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 I'm not getting into those those quizzes. He ain't fought anybody. He ain't fought anybody at 47. You need to get my head chopped off at it because I'm at home. Mm-hmm. <laughs> they listening in Omaha. They listening. Bo Mac watching this shit. Y'all know Bo Mac watching so? it. And he called in, so you know he watching right, it. Yeah. yeah, yeah, I know, yeah, I, know, I, know I know, I know, I know, I know. Yeah. But anyway, man, uh, what I want to ask her is just just a little question I want to ask you. Who did? Who do you think? Or who is who you would have had out of Layla Ali and Ann Wolf? Who you would have chosen mm-hmm. in that fight, and why? Now I appreciate you because this is a question I have never got asked. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I got I'm, <laughs> <laughs> I'm loving it. I'm loving it. Go ahead. <laughs> yeah, that's a good question. Um, that's a good yeah, I, could, I don't know. I, I don't want to be no little punk and say a draw because then that's kind of like, come on, you got to pick a side, I guess. Right, right. If I have to pick, I probably would pick. Um, I don't even know what I want to say. I think I'm going to go with Layla. I think I would go with Layla. I think that Layla had, I'm a, I'm a fan of boxing. So I'm always going to go with the boxer over the slugger. I like the art of boxing. I like sleek defense. And I think that Layla had a little more of that. I think that Ann was a beast. I think that she was super strong. And I think that if she would have caught Layla with the right punch, it probably would have been good night. But I think if it went to the distance and it went off of just like the skill, I would have went with Layla. Yeah. Uh, good, 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 good choice. And, and I'll tell you why, you know, it, even though I am an Ann Wolf fan now, don't, let's not get it. Close. Most of us are. I love, I love, I love both. Both. both, and both. I'm both. Here's, here's the situation with Ann Wolf. It was always the stamina problem. If she could not fix that going into a fight with Layla, she would have been stopped in a fight. Not just lost, but she would have been stopped. Because you got to have gas in your thing. And you got to be able to weather the storm. And she worked that body like never before. Yeah, so I, 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 I would have had to go with uh, Layla as well. So you, that was that was good. That was a good answer. Mm. You, um, <laughs> you think? Go ahead, Pastor. Yeah, yeah. no, no. What you were going to say for No, I can say who you would who who you would have chosen that. Well, I went to high. M- remember, I went to high school with Layla. You uh, know what oh, I mean? Yeah, so okay, I'm kind of okay. biased. So I'm like yeah, okay. I'm like biased. You know, so it's it's a little right. different. You know what I mean? Right, right. I forgot about that. I, mm-hmm. I did forget about that. Mm-hmm. Well, anyway, I, I just wanted to call in, man, and because uh, she Thanks. had me over here just teasing and chatting. This nigga still get ready. This nigga, <laughs> right. this nigga, are you serious? <laughs> you thought Jesus wasn't going to show up. He showed up. <laughs> this nigga giggling, dog. This nigga cheeks hurt. This nigga cheeks hurt. God, I, hey, right, man, I love y'all. I ain't going to hold right, on. I appreciate you, big with it, bro. Appreciate hey, you, dog. And, uh, hold on. Uh-huh. We are going to support you, sir. Okay. And I wanted to make sure you know that. We're going we're gonna to stomp the yard. We're going to make some noise. And goddamn it, they cannot disregard. You're going to be in that ring with your hands up. You're <laughs> at the end of that fight as a winner. Thanks. All right, love. Thank you. Thanks. Shout out to Charlie Love yes, and the Cash App. But ESPN got Bud third in the welterweights. EJ all day. I saw that today. They got Earl Spence, Manny Pacquiao, Terrence Crawford. I, I thought that was just retarded. You know what I mean? I guess they don't. Respect them at all. Either. I don't know. Anyways, man, we got another call. What's up? What's up, Kyle? My nigga, this, this is dedication. This is anti hesitation. It's a real nigga celebration. celebration. Hey, what's popping? Five one zero. No, big friend. Okay. You got my you got my dog in the house tonight. Okay. Oh, and she gonna owe me five hundred dollars. She gonna know exactly who I am because she gonna be five hundred dollars after Earl Smith beat Terrence Crawford. As much as love I got for Terrence Crawford. In the whole camp, you know, Earl Swiss is gonna win. I'm gonna need my five hundred dollars. <laughs> I'm telling y'all, run it up. <laughs> Let me know because I'm about to have a man. That's gonna be rough in the streets. I get so, you next, so this man. Is, this is this is a hey, Fred. I yes. was trying to be me. I know your this, phone this kept on freezing. Home. I saw it freezing, but it kept on. Anyways, enough about that guy. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So you know, me and her go. We uh, we we met in L.A. And we argued about uh, the uh, yeah. Terrence Carver versus Earl Spence fight, mm. and uh, and then me and uh, one of her friends 
we uh we, we hella close now. Uh, my, my nigga Steven Nelson. Yeah. And, uh, we was uh, we was in Jersey and she owed me an interview too. So I do owe you an interview. interview too. Very in Atlantic City. Uh, yeah. I got you. So, I yeah, got you. man. She's one of the coolest people I've ever met. Like on yeah, the street, cool. we started arguing about Earl Spence versus. Uh, yeah, we was all at the fight getting loud. It got it got it got, it got heated. Oh, uh, that's what's up. I said what I said. I meant it. <laughs> Stand by it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And we still people, but I said it. Yeah, I meant it. Stand by it. I'm team bud. I, I and I want my money. That's it. That, that, yeah. that's all. I want my money. <laughs> that's it. Oh, I can't believe that yeah. shit. Hey, 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 and Fred, What's man, enough of the Terrence Crawford slander, dog. I keep telling you this, man. I'm, it's not you slander. No, it's not slander. It's not. Listen, I respect Bud. No, I t I say everything. It's not about Bud. I think he's one of the best fathers that I've ever seen visually you know, on, on Instagram. Going sideways. We talk about Bud. I know, but 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 I don't want people to misconstrue. Like I don't like Terrence Crawford. I like I like the fact that Terrence Crawford don't like me. I like I like I I don't like gray area, black or white. So I like the fact that Terrence. I don't fuck with that nigga. I like that shit. That's I'm comfortable. With. He was never going to interview with me. I, I'm comfortable, totally comfortable with that. But when he fights those other motherfuckers, guess who I'm rooting for? And, and, and I got the and I got the and I got the receipts to prove it on my channel. But fuck that nigga up. Period. You know what I mean? But when you get to Earl Spence, when you go down to Dallas, when you go to Cowboy Stadium, nigga. We want our money, Fred. When it's all said, we just want our money, and we want you. We want you to apologize to Terrence on your channel. If you win that fight, I think that that's just deserving. Oh, oh, I'm one of the first people he's gonna run to for sure. For yeah. sure. For yeah. sure. No doubt about mine. And and I will give him all the credit he deserves. All the credit he deserves. He and, and he will deserve it because I think Earl Spence is really that nigga. I think Earl Spence is really Even that. that yeah, I I I uh and, and, and like you there is some doubt because we haven't seen it, right? There is some doubt there, but uh by how he's progressed in terms of his speech, in terms of what I saw, how he looked like physically, you know what I mean? Because I follow, I follow all y'all extensively, you know what I mean? And uh, so I, I, I believe that I'm uncertain if he'll be 100% because he's jumping into the fire immediately with Danny Garcia, I heard. But the fight after that, I, I think that he'll be much better. And, and I think Danny Garcia is a very good uh, litmus test for him because he's not going to... Because he's going to dictate where the fight is being held at from a distance and or inside. Because Danny's not going to he's not going to infringe on that meshing point. You know, what I mean, the middle distance and all that. So so I think it's a it's, it's a good fight. Danny's got rocks in both hands. You know, what I mean, Danny can definitely beat him. But I think Earl will outpoint him in that fight. And then they got to fight. I think they got to fight next because we don't know what's going to happen with this country. Uh, is Earl squeezing down the 47? We don't, I mean, he said it in other interviews that he's squeezing down. So, you know, I don't know how many fights he got left, but that fight has to happen, you know? Yes. Great. Like I told her in LA, it's probably not going to happen because I just, I mean, I just don't see Bob Aaron doing what he's supposed to do for it to get done. Mm -hmm. I'm saying, I told her in, uh, in my home, I said, dog, it's not going to happen. I mean, I, I, you know, I don't Damn, want to see like I always tell Fred. I like both of them. No, right? You know what I'm saying? <laughs> it must be yeah, working. Like, I mean, <laughs> like I said, like, bro, I see that all the time. I don't want to see it, but if it has to happen, I just think Earl Spence is just the truth, man. Mm. You know what I'm saying? You know, I like, I, I love them both. I, I wish, uh, well, would have said at 140 for a little bit longer, mm. uh, just until, uh, Earl went up to 154, but, you know, it is what it is, man. Yes. Nigga, but, uh, nigga, 32 years old. He couldn't hold on to that way. If he could, he would have. <laughs> that body be talking. Yeah, you know what I mean? yeah, but thank you for calling and thank you for showing I me some love. You know how to get people off the phone. I appreciate it. <laughs> <laughs> Don't be putting it on me, for it. <laughs> I, love it. I love it. I love it. Call my nigga, though. Call my nigga. We talk every day. Yeah, man. You know, me, me, me and her, me, me and her friend, man, that's my, that's my guy, man, her friend. Mm -hmm. Hey, so, uh, my homeboy said he want to get with you, though, because he want to start For sure. Yeah, just, just let me know. Just let me know. Yeah, we yeah, good. Yeah. We Gucci. I mean, we gravy. Yeah, we good. Mm -hmm. All right, Kill, man, take take it easy, man. It was, it was good talking to you again. Nice. Uh, thank you for, uh, for that interview. For sure. Thank you. Thank you. 
Hey, you know that nigga, uh, when you walk a nigga to the front door and he got one more question and shit, you know what I mean? <laughs> 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 you that nigga, you got, nigga, it's, it's 1237. It's twenty oh, seven. Yes. You know, we we gonna, gonna put your song next, but we got we got my. I got, I got a show today. today. It's all I'm trying, trying to do. do. Hey, hustle and motivate. Shout out to Nipsey Hustle, the great man. I, yeah, I live great. Yeah, did he say that's right? I was good with it, Raquel. How you doing, Queen? Nice. How are you? How are you? I'm doing wonderful. I'm doing good. You know. Uh, I wanted to talk about your last two fights um, because I actually do follow your career extensively. You know what I'm mm-hmm. saying? And I know that you had fought uh, Abadra. Is that is that right? Our, uh, uh, very Abara. last fight was yeah. Abadra, Abadra, something like that. Uh, Abadra, yes. Yeah. Um, what do you feel has been different um, for you to get the knockouts that you've been getting in your last past two fights? Because I see that you're really shifting. You're putting more. Uh, emphasis on your power shots but I want to know do you think it's because you're more comfortable now and you're like you know what I'm saying setting up your shots with your jab more or I just want to know from your point of view um you know what I'm saying like how are you getting to the knockouts the way that you're getting to them now um I think that like for me personally with my coach and my team I recognize that I'm one of the stronger girls in the division when it comes to just punching I have like you know, some knockouts just straight by punching. I think a lot of the girls will have TKO punches, but you know what I'm saying? It's one thing to have KO punches. And that's something me and my team been really focusing on. My coach always tell me like, you're naturally strong. So we work a lot on just sitting down and trying to transition. Now I feel like I'm finally comfortable in the pros as opposed to from the amateurs. It's a big difference. And a lot of people don't understand it from just the tempo of the fight. That was my first 10 round fight. When I fought the bar fight, I got the fight on a two week notice. Um, So, I didn't really have a full camp for the fight, but like I said, you got to go when it's time to go. So, you know, I took the fight two week notice, flew out to Canada and went to go make it happen because I told myself no risk, no reward. You believe in yourself, you're going to make it happen. So I really felt like um, I could have pressed a little bit harder and I felt like I really could have pressed for the knockout with Barra, but I knew that I didn't have no long camp and I really just kind of, that was my first time going 10 rounds. So I just really wanted to see what it felt like, you know, check my conditioning, but me and my team are always working on power shots. We're working on sitting down on our shots. We're working on following through with the shots because we don't want to just win. I want to knock out if I can get it. And I feel like it's lacking in the women fights where you're not really seeing that, that them hard punches. And if I can drop you with a punch, I'm trying to drop you. I'm trying to end it early, and I want to put it in my own hands as opposed to the ref if I can help it. Got you. Got you. Because I was going to say the way that you throw your shots, you know, as soon as you get them hurt, you know what I'm saying, get her hurt, you know what I'm saying, if you rattle out some combinations, you're going to get that stoppage regardless. You feel what I'm saying? While she on the road, pop, 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 you know, go to the body, go to the head, mix it up. But um, I want to know when, when it comes down to your looks, because you're very beautiful and you're very confident on top of your beauty. You're not one of these super shy girls. You understand what I'm saying? So you can be in magazines, you can be doing all type of stuff. Um <laughs> What co- commercials or what uh, magazines have been, you know, hollering at you, maybe on Instagram or hitting you up out of nowhere? Or what magazines would you like to do work with, you know, just to get your name more out there and, uh, you know what I'm saying? Just spread the word more about you and everything. Um, that's, like, I, that's one thing women have is, is they is they beauty on top of their skills and rank. Mm-hmm. Thank you. Well, I have to give a shout out to the first magazine that gave me their cover, which is So Effing Dope Magazine. It's a black owned and operated magazine. They're amazing, dope people. They gave me my first cover shot. So shout out to So Effing Dope. I love them. Um, And I'm open and interested in working with um, any magazines. Um, I felt like that's been something that I haven't been able to really get to the next level with because I don't have those type of connections. I don't have, you know, connections with Essence and, you know, some of the other publications that I would love to be a part of it. But um, if it was up to me, you know, anybody that has a platform that's promoting positivity or that's promoting something that I'm about, I would love to partner with them and work with them. So if you have some connections or some shout outs, you know, let me know and make it happen. I got you. Yeah, I, I definitely got you 110%. Um, I know you was talking about that. You said that um, sometimes, you know, you like to eat or whatever, you know what I'm saying, and get up and wait. What are some effective exercises that you've been doing to get off, you know, get off the weight? Um, in a manner that you can still have your energy when you're in the ring because a lot of people, they think just, you know, starving themselves, you know, is the way. Do you have, like, 
some special technique that you do that you can share or you want to just keep that to yourself? <laughs> no, I'm always about sharing knowledge because what's the point of me having knowledge? So just to kind of give you a little bit of a backstory, um, I lost 50 pounds before I had my first fight. Um, so I definitely know all about, you know, health and, and eating and, you know, what I'm saying dieting and stuff like that. But what I really had to do for this quarantine personally was really get out there and get on the road and just, you know, put my run in. But I'm going to do my first um, live Zoom boxing class this Sunday. It's going to be from 10 to 11. You know, you guys are free to welcome and join in. And I really think that it's about really keeping your heart rate up. So you don't have to do long runs. Sometimes it's boring for people, but do a fast, intense, high intensity workout for a short period of time to keep your metabolism flowing. I stopped eating meat a couple of years ago. I'm slowly transitioning out of eating seafood now. Wow. Um, right now, I'm currently on the three day juice cleanse. Um, shout out to Roots Nutrition is a black owned um, nutritional company out of Los Angeles. I'm doing this cleanse right now. I think it's a dope cleanse um, and I'm juicing. I'm going to do juicing for three days straight. So I really think it's about um, what? Oh, yeah. And shout out to um, this, um San Francisco vegan ladies and um, the hood vegans in San Francisco because they're an amazing company, too. But I really think that it's time for us to get to get honest with ourselves. When you know you eat nonsense, we know you're not drinking your water, you're not, you know, eating them vitamins and minerals that all plays a part. So it's like even if it's just so much as going down and walking, you know, what I'm saying 30 minutes. But what I do personally as a workout for myself, I've been in the gym. I've been blessed to be able to have the gyms back open, but I do high intensity workouts. So I put like um, 20 rounds on my phone. I do like 30 second intervals, 10 second break. And I do like push ups. I do sit ups. I do jumping jacks. I do burpees. You know, you mix that in with shadow boxing and it's kind of fat, fun. It's fast intensity and you can get a good burn from it. And like once you're doing high intensity stuff, it burns throughout the day. So quick, short bursts of energy, hour workouts. I'm drinking like a gallon of water a day, at the least half a gallon. And I'm juicing at least one of my meals as opposed to eating three meals a day. Like I don't eat breakfast. I just have a smoothie or a juice mm -hmm. and I don't really eat till midday. And that really mm -hmm. helps you keep your weight maintained. Make sure that you're kind of giving your body a break to, you know, recycle and make sure that you're cleansing properly. Beautiful answer. Damn. See, look at you, you're on top of your game. I see you, I see you. And I uh, hey, whenever you come out here to LA, I want to meet you. I want to do, you know what I'm saying? I you know what I'm saying? Speak with you, talk with you, rap with you, and, and we can work out together. Go run a mile and, you know, and talk together. So you feel me? You know what I'm saying? Like, you I'm on my fitness, you know what I'm saying? Hey, I'm a personal trainer, so this is what I do. So it's, it's I see you. You know Yes, I to. absolutely. Definitely. And, and, and he definitely got a gun on him because you like how he, uh, uh, when he said when you hit it with the combos, bop, bop, nigga. Oh, <laughs> old Crips and Blood say bop, crazy. bop. Nigga. <laughs> bop, My nigga bop. crazy, man. Wow, bro. Wow, bro. But look, but look, but look. I ain't going to be long with you. Appreciate look. you, kid. In closing, you super, super dope. And I know Thank other you. people trying to call in, you know what I'm saying? They probably going to try, try to shoot their shot and all that kind of shit with. But look. <laughs> shoot, nigga, shoot. Have a wonderful night. Ooh. Have a wonderful night, and um, I'm definitely going to be supporting your career. I'm about to go ahead and uh, shout out your name and stuff on my social media platform. Thank you. I appreciate that so much. And when I come to L.A., I'm, I'm definitely hitting you up. I'll tap in with Florida and tell them to give me all that contact information. Definitely. And if I can support your gym, shoot it to me. You know, it's all about support, breed support. You know what I'm saying? When you give love, you get love. So any way that I can support y'all, show me some love. Send me a DM. Let me know your product or how I can support you or story, your, your, whatever your content, whatever. I'm down for the, I'm down for the people. Appreciate it. I appreciate you. We're gonna play your song now. We're gonna play the motivational music. Motivational music. Wait, because I'm we going off soon. Because I gotta work. I gotta work on my line. I'm working on my site. I know. Yeah. Everything's the ground up. Um, pound for pound acts in my fan of three minute rounds. Absolutely. We already trained three minute rounds. But if y'all gonna if they gonna change the three minutes rounds, pay us three minute pricing. Mm -hmm. That's that on that. But you know, we already putting in the work. Already trained three minute rounds, but. Don't change it to three minute rounds and pay us too many money. Mm -hmm. So right. that's yeah. You want to? All right, y'all ready? Here go my song. I'm nervous. <laughs> you want to introduce it? You got the title or something? <laughs> well, it's kind of like my Pretty Beast anthem, but I made this song because I felt like I wanted to encourage, I wanted to motivate, and I know rapper or no singer, but I'm definitely a motivational figure because you know I grind hard, I believe it, I live it, and I do it, and I feel like. Get out of your own way. Let's go get it. So this is my song and I'm sticking to it. Let's go. 
Let's go. Let's go. Let's push. Let's get it. Stop playing. Let's go. Let's push. Let's get it. Stop playing. Let's go. Let's push. Let's get it. Stop playing. Let's go, pretty beast. Here. I got a blaze of trail that ain't never been blazed before. You're not ready to give up everything that you ever wanted, everything that you love for this dream. It ain't I gotta make a way for all these little girls that's coming up after me so they can shine, so they can get paid, so that they understand that we're supposed to be here. Because it's now or never. You're either gonna take that opportunity or you're gonna lose that opportunity. We deserve our spot in history. We deserve our pay. I got them coming with our spot. He's hating on us. And who better than me? Let's go. Let's go. Pretty Beast is a movement. Pretty Beast is a lifestyle. Pretty Beast will not be denied because I promised myself I'm going to do it my way and I'm going to shine every time. Stop. Do it for the little girls that's watching because they got to know Pretty Beast is a movement. Let's Pretty Beast is a lifestyle. Let's do it. Stop playing. Every push up, every sit up, every grind, every mile I run, every punch I take, every punch I give, I deserve to be here. I deserve my spot in history. We deserve our spot in history. We deserve that shine. We deserve this space because we earned it. Can't nobody take it away from me. Can't nobody take it away from you because I earned this. I built this from the ground up. Who gonna stop me? Who gonna take it? You ain't been through what I've been through. You ain't lived through what I lived through. All your friends ain't been murdered. I know myself. I didn't have no hand. It's yours. It's yours for the taking. You a lion. You a beast. You a grind. Go get it. We are accomplished. We are leaders. We gonna build some generational wealth, and I promise. When I'm gone, my family not gonna have to work because I built that. Let's go. Let's go. Let's push. Let's get it. Okay, I'm like, I'm what are you doing? What are you working for? What are you believing? Because I told myself when I walk in the gym, I will not be out work. I will not be out grind. You can ask anybody that's been on my team. Anybody that I work with, they know. Ain't nobody out working me. Ain't nobody out doing me. Ain't nobody out growing me. Ain't nobody beating me, period. Let's Because go. I put in that work. I put in that grind. My blood, my sweat, my tears. All of that's gonna matter. All that shit gotta matter because I put it on the line every single time I step in that gym. Every single time that I go home. Every single time that I show up. Let's get it. Everything that's coming to me, I deserve it. Because I put in that work for it. Who gonna stop? Who gonna take it from me? Nobody. Let's stop playing. Let's go. She got the exclusive view of myself. <laughs> you got the exclusive. Nobody else got to hear we the exclusive. We got the exclusive. Yeah, we got world premieres in the barbershop. Shit. Shit. The nigga came in with the CDs and shit. I, I got that new Raquel Miller. I got, that, I got that pretty beast. Two for five. Matter of fact, I'll give you three for ten. If you give me ten right now, I'll give you three copies. We appreciate you coming into the barbershop. You got one more comment. They just followed. I just followed so effing yeah. dope magazine because you promoted them. That's how it's supposed to work. We need to network us and build together more often than not. Thank you, sweet science. Appreciate you. Yeah. Uh, any last word? I, first, I want to say thank you for coming in. Thank you for honoring your word. And uh, uh, I just um, another channel just reached out to you. He's going to he's going to email your manager right now. And uh, it, that's a pretty big platform as well. And uh, uh, we're going to push the shit out of that fight for sure. I promise you. Promise you. The vibration will change. Thank you. I had fun talking with everybody. Thank you for tuning in. Thank you for calling in, showing love. I appreciate you, Team Pretty Beast. It's a movement, you know, for the people, by the people, supported by the people. Right. You can check me out. I'm on Instagram under MS period Raquel Miller. I'm on Facebook under Raquel Miller. The line is coming out really soon. It's the PB brand. Check it out. It's going to exclusively drop in about two weeks. Ladies in Power is my nonprofit organization. You know, we all about just giving back to our communities and being that voice. Fred, I appreciate you for sharing oh, your platform oh. with me. Thank you. Barbershop conversations. You dope. You got so many dope people coming through here. And it's just a beautiful energy. And I'm thankful. So right. thank you. All the time. Thank you. Uh, tell your sister we said thank you as well. Thank you. Absolutely. All okay. The, all the time.
I want to I want to copy this. I want to put it on my channel too. Oh yeah, I'm trying I'll, to build up my YouTube. So. I'll send you the link. I'll send you the link. I'll send you the Thank link. You. For sure, Thank you. all the time. Okay. Bye, Bye guys. <laughs> Appreciate you, man. What a fucking interview, nigga. Man, tell me we don't. Man, come on, y'all. Come on, y'all. That shit was so much fun. Nigga, we had Pastor Usher Deacon 305 giggling and shit. That shit was hilarious, man. What's up, H Money? What you got? My nigga, this is dedication. dedication. This, this is, is anti-hesitation. Hesitation. This is a real this nigga celebration. celebration. What's popping, dog? Hey, Fred, another classic interview, man. You know what I mean? You doing wow. your thing, my brother. You know what I mean? You for sure, man. You turning you turning up the channel, man, on a regular. I appreciate it. You know what I'm saying? This is the only place where you're going to get exclusive content. You know what I'm saying? Exclusive call-outs. She want that smoke with Clarissa Shields for real, for real, bro. That's some bad blood right there, man. I <laughs> got your eye. It's some bad <laughs> blood right there, nigga. And <laughs> <laughs> hey, they got some real bad blood, Fred. And you know what? I think you can make this fight happen. I think it could possibly be the I biggest fight. Happen. And she's going to get tired of answering the question on both sides. And, 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 and the beautiful thing about it is, it, it it'll be it'll be our fight, you know. What I mean, same thing with Bud and and Earl. No matter what we say, if they're not fighting each other, we're rooting for them. You know, um, it feels good to have that conversation. You know, Ray Leonard or Hearns. You know, what I mean, Marvin or Marvin or Leonard. You know, what I mean, it it those are great conversations to have, literally in the barbershop. You know, what I mean, it, you know, what I mean, and and she she was great tonight. She was great. For sure, friend. She she really knows how to talk that shit, man. You know what I'm saying? I'm I'm looking forward to seeing her podcast as well. Me I think too. it's gonna be yeah, it's mm -hmm. gonna be really good, man. She talks, you know what I'm saying? She talks really good, man. Appreciate you, Fred, bringing that content, man. You know how to come through, man. I just missed her. Yeah, you I just missed her. her. Yeah, you just missed but her. Yo, man, I know she probably still listening. It's Mister the Zone right here. You know what I'm saying? Hey, Raquel, this Mister the Zone. You know what I mean? I know you ain't gonna forget me. You dig what I mean? I had to show up. You know what I'm saying? I, I like to get my shine on. You dig what I mean? Hey, friends, shout out to you. You know what I'm saying? Shout out to everybody in the chat. My boy DB had her blushing, though. <laughs> DB had her blushing, bro. <laughs> so, man. Oh, that's DB on the line? That's him? Yeah, he, he been on the phone. You know he closed out. What, the what, show. If, I, what if I see you? Yeah, man, you know we got to do it like that. We got to tell him something to make him show us some teeth. You know what I'm saying? Hey, for sure, I keep man. Hey, man, you represent the city real well. I, I can say that much. You know what I mean? You make LA look good, my brother. Keep holding it down, big bro. You know what I mean? I Salute to everybody, man. I appreciate you. For sure, I keep man. Appreciate it, Fred. Man, thank you for the great interview, my brother. All the time. For sure, peace. Appreciate you, big homie. Appreciate you. We out this month. What's up, DB? Man, listen here. <laughs> listen here. Yes. It's, it's one thing for us to know who these people are when they are entertaining us, when they got a microphone in front of their face mm -hmm. and they rapping, they singing, when they acting in front of a camera, when they directing movies and films, when they are, you know, being, uh, uh, when they're boxing and playing basketball, we can all see their talent, right? And they're extraordinary, obviously, from being at a, prof at a high professional level, at an elite level. Mm -hmm. But when we get a chance to know these people, their personality, their, their real soul, mm -hmm. their character, you know what I mean? And we get a chance to uh, see the kind of integrity that they have, you know, and what the things that they can say when, when uh, Nick Cannon, for example, right? Cameras are in front of him. He, he does his part. He, he, he talks the good talk. And now we know that he walks the walk too. You know, you're not going to make me apologize. You know, my last name ain't Haney. You know what I'm saying? My last mm. name ain't, uh, who else has I just apologized uh, recently? Deshaun, Deshaun Jackson. Jackson. Steven Jackson, you know what I'm saying? He and respect to those dudes because all three of those dudes, I love those brothers too. But you know, he's like, hell no, y'all not gonna make me apologize, you know, because I didn't say nothing wrong and whatever I said was the truth. So deal with that, you know, and and we gotta respect uh, re respect him and back him up. But I was just saying that the parallels. So when she came in here, man, and she showed us who she really was. Yo, she. How Man, imagine her and Carissa. Man, they need to make that. Fuck, stop bullshitting. Come on, y'all. Come on, let's recycle that money, man. Let's be black when it when it's time to make money too. You know what I mean? Fuck your promoter. Fuck what they want to do. Uh, what's that Jewish? Uh, not, not, I, I, not, I'll, I'll be quiet. Anyways, go ahead. Yeah, yeah. No, I, I, I feel you. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. All right. They're gonna be trying to Nick Cannon us and shit. I, I, I just don't so. want them to take this video down. That's why I stopped. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but I got you. Uh -huh. yeah. we, we need this video up though for yeah. for the queen you know what yeah, i'm saying we, that's, we why I that's why i stopped that's why i stopped yeah mm -hmm. 
Yeah, we need it for we need it for your platform, but also need it for hers mm-hmm. because she really did come in and represent us well. You know, yeah. and when people, man, listen, it's funny because I always ask whenever I got shorties around, I always ask them if there's three or five places that you can go, where would they be? And they always give me the same bullshit answers. You know, oh, I would go to Greece, I would go to Spain, you know, I go to France, I go to London. Get the fuck out of here with that. But when somebody get a chance to go to Kemet, when somebody get a chance to go to to, to, to the Congo, when a person get a chance to go somewhere, you know, spend, cause you, when you go to Africa, you literally spend a day in the sky. Yeah. You know, the, the, those trips are 20 to 24 hours long. Mm. You understand? So for a person to spend an entire day to go across the world, spend a lot of money, the trip is, you know, what's it, about a $2,500 trip. And, um, and they actually do that instead of going to one of these glorified European places, man, we gotta, we gotta respect that. Mm-hmm. But she showed us a lot, man, you know, what her fabric is about. Mm-hmm. And her fabric is tougher than 501 jeans. And yeah. we love it and we appreciate it. And she's so, girly about it, too. That was that. Wasn't that, yeah. Yeah, wasn't that how, how dope, how girly she was and shit? Yeah. yeah I know she and grown you know, and shit. I don't want to be, you know, I mean, we got some, may have some feminists in here. You know, I mean, we may have some weak niggas in here. You call her girly, but y'all know what I mean. How graceful she was. How about that? And yeah. I like that. Yeah, I like yeah, that. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I, I don't. You know what I'm saying? I, it wouldn't be good for me to meet her right now, you know, because I don't want to. Uh, I don't want to mess up her career. She's gonna fuck around and have triplets. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, she fine in real life. I ain't gonna even lie to y'all niggas. Like I was like, yeah, she fine in real life, and and, and she yeah. she yeah she gone now. She thick thick. Yeah, she real thick. Like she yeah nigga. She like she like she like that. You know, when you see a girl working out and shit and you look and you're like, oh, fuck. Even if you don't talk to her, you got to make a U-turn just to make sure it's really real. You know what I mean? Yeah, the first time I seen Patty Dean, that's what happened. I seen Patty, I had to back up. I'm like, damn, my girl, bad. <laughs> Who was that? Nigga Patty. I'm like, oh, okay. Nah, that's this PD, man. Let me get up out of here. <laughs> that's what's up. That's what's up. That's yeah. what's up. But Clarissa already has a certain fan base. Uh-huh. You know what I mean? And because of her Olympic platform, mm-hmm. right? Yeah. And then she came and she won some titles. But now, now we have another person that we can support. That don't mean that we got to hate Clarissa. You no. know what I'm saying? We, we still love her, like her too. But now, you know, we got somebody, especially from California too. Mm-hmm. What? California. Mm-hmm. Only people from Cali know what that is. Mm-hmm. But <laughs> we had a whole West Coast there. You know what I'm saying? And I'm pretty sure that town is probably going to get her on and try to do something with her too. Kyle going to get something on door with her. I'm sure uh, K-Hope and Trill going to probably get her on there too. So, just with everything from Texas and everything on this side of the Mississippi period. Like she going to have a lot of pub and we're going to really be able to push this fight. So we got to go to her IG, to, to her Twitter, to her MySpace, to your space, outer space, whatever space we can find, we need to pump mm-hmm. her up and get that fight going and recycle that black dollar. Mm-hmm. Facts. Yeah, 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 this definitely going to reverberate. Yeah, this was a great interview. I mean, this was a great interview, dog. Like, and it was fun. Like I wasn't, I wasn't searching for questions or none of that shit. Yeah, that's the, the real one. These Cali man, Cali girls are just. Mm-hmm. It's a special breed. Mm-hmm. This is a special breed. Born and born and bred. Just, mm-hmm. just different from the rest. Nice. You know. Big Shout time. out to Patty Dean one more time. You know, mm-hmm. Picasso done made it in. My brother Picasso. <laughs> uh, and don't forget tomorrow night before DB continues, we got Cheryl Dorsey in the building, and we have the lawyer of a young man that was murdered by the police in Buffalo, New York. Buffalo, New York. And Sunday, we got Wu-Tang Clan coming in. So don't forget, we got great shows coming. And Thursday, the Thursday is just us. We rocking out. You know what I mean? And and, 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 and and let me tell you, you know what I noticed today? I'm getting goosebumps and shit. You know what I noticed? If y'all can't see. But I realized how important our community was. How comfortable we were. Like, like, like when we communicate with ourselves, like the time we put in during quarantine, it showed w- with Raquel Miller. Yeah. Y- you see what I mean? You see how comfortable everyone was, you know, even she's a celebrity and, and yet you can still speak in your authentic voice and she's comfortable enough to respond. She didn't, de- you know what I mean? The, 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 the community we built in this motherfucker is, is for everlasting and, and it's going to spawn off to your YouTube channel your youtube channel your instagram your business we're gonna support one another 360 right it, it, we got a yeah. 360 deal in the barbershop we support every everybody <laughs> how about that 
Yeah, I wait for seven twenty, man. Uh, seven twenty. We're gonna do it. And we're gonna do it roll it all the way yeah. back around. Not I felt real. that shit. I felt the sense of community tonight. I was like, this shit felt good. Honestly, that shit felt good. Good. You know what I mean? It did. I ain't gonna lie to y'all niggas. It felt good for real. Felt really good. It's crazy because every time we have a guest, I mean, there's always some people that are in the chat just getting getting down. But you know, there's certain certain people when uh, we have guests. There's always somebody that's shining in the chat as well. You mm-hmm. know. So Eric and St. Louis is in there cracking jokes. I saw that. You know, Mir, he always in there active. He in there cracking jokes and uh, uh, fly high. Whenever somebody come in and talk about Bud, you know, my brother fly high, he get excited. He's like, hell yeah, I love this chick now. I want to marry her, you know? So yeah, it was, it was cool. We got a super chat, by the way. Uh-huh, yeah. Terrence Bailey Sr. for the super chat. He says, I'm going to post this video for women CCW for females in honor of the guest, the appropriate weapon to carry for self-protection for a female that conceals appropriate. Many afraid of guns. So shout out to TB Senior, Pastor TB Senior, my brother. <laughs> Pastor T. Yeah, Pastor. <laughs> First AME, second AME Baptist Church. <laughs> yeah. Third AME. AME, fourth AME, fifth AME. <laughs> 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 oh man too blessed to be stressed and highly favored that nigga was giggling db nigga that nigga was giggling his shoulders was bouncing and shit y'all know them old niggas and shit when, when, when them motherfuckers get full you you know when the grandson comes and play with grandfather after dinner and shit and he say that joke and shit and grandpa just be shaking and shit <laughs> yeah. that was pastor usher deacon 305 dog that nigga was that nigga got struck by Cupid in this motherfucker, dog. That shit was classic. Yeah, me too. Yeah, I, I love it, man. Mm-hmm. man. From 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 everything that's black, vanilla black, mm-hmm. caramel, cocoa, chocolate, double dip fudge. Yeah, mm-hmm. all these these black women be coming in here, man. And I don't know how we do it, how you do it, but how we man, do we it. Get the, how we the, do we it. We literally get the cream of the crop. Yeah, we do. It's 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 just. They have no other option but to be authentic in this motherfucker because we're going to push them. <laughs> you know what I mean? And and they say the cream rises to the top. You know what I mean? So it was just beautiful in here tonight. I had so much fun. I was in autopilot all day today. All day today because I had some logistic shit to do today. I went to First United to finalize my bank account and shit. And I had paperwork and shit. And you know, I got I was helping some tenants uh, fill out for they because my some of my tenants didn't even know about the rent thing. So I said, no, nah, um, for next month, focus on trying to get take care of this. So hopefully uh, I'm going to help you out because I reduced I, I reduced a lot of my tenants rent during the pandemic. And I was like, and they didn't even know. So I'm like helping them all day, fill out their forms and shit. You know what I mean? And you know what? Fred, Fred, let me cut you off so that I can say that I cut you off yesterday. Actually, uh-huh. um, yesterday I cut you off when you started to talk about it. Uh-huh. So can you can you elaborate on that just for people in? Because when I listen to the when I listen to the playback of the show, mm-hmm. I realized that you were halfway through your sentence and I cut you off, so you didn't get a chance to elaborate on the uh, on the uh, rent reduction thing. Oh, so so what's happening is the city of Los Angeles is uh it's h a c l a dot org. Is, is 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 that it? Can someone put it in the chat and uh um it um it uh, it it pays up to a thousand dollars per month for for rent reductions or or to pay towards your rent and it uh um oh it's bum gardener on the list alicia bum i said alicia napoleon but her, it, it is napoleon because she's married and shit but that's basically what it is so so you go to this website it's a one page you fill out it takes five to ten minutes to fill out if you have the information and 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 it's basically done but it's important that you do it if you live in los angeles please do it if you live in los angeles okay if you own your house figure it out all right i'm not gonna sit here and say no nah, but figure it out okay okay uh, right uh, uh rent a room out in your house okay all right <laughs> rent your garage yeah. out you know what i mean R- rent the basement out get you know what i mean do it legally you know what i'm saying hopefully that helps all right what's up yeah, no, that's cool. Town mm-hmm. Biz says she's fine as fuck. That's the real, real business, Town mm-hmm. Biz. She mm-hmm. definitely is a, a nah, bad, beautiful. bad one. Nah, she you know? Yeah, we got another. Uh, do, do you see it? You want to read it? No, let me see. No, I don't see it yet. Uh, it's on the chat. It's on the screen. Oh, Fred, with all due respect, you've been saying a lot lately. Damn, this was a great interview. It's time for you to realize what you mean to us. 
because you're the common denominator oh, in all of this. I appreciate Damn. that. Don't get me warm and mushy and shit. The sweet science. science examiner. I appreciate man. you. I appreciate you. You know what I mean? I'm I nothing see. without us. Y- y'all, man, I'm, I say that sincerely. My kids know y'all names. I'm being honest. My kids know y'all names for real. So I mean, uh, we're a community, and, and that's real. So I'm I'm not. It, 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 it's a uh, it's a team sport. <laughs> it's a team sport. You know what I mean? They gonna say Fred Hawthorne, but I know what it is. I know what it. I 100 percent know what it is. So don't worry about yeah. it, right? Unique Don. All we got is us. All we got is us. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So anyway, Mir said, add Alicia uh, Baumgartner to the list. Mm-hmm. Not Napoleon Kaufman. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. You know, Napoleon Kaufman went from Washington to the Oakland Raiders, you know, so I had to throw that little oak towel in there. That nigga bench pressed over 400 pounds. Remember that shit? Yeah. Remember that? He became yeah, a yeah. He, monster. He, yeah. Yeah. He didn't want that contract. That nigga just went straight to being a pastor and shit. That nigga said, your tides, ha, your tides, ha, your 10%. Ha. I don't need no <laughs> NFL contract. Ha. I'm going to get my tides. <laughs> uh, man, yeah. yeah. Anyway, man, we gonna we gonna get this for good. Right. Unique Dom, peace to you. P Good, Jay Cooley, uh-huh. Mir, Eric St. Louis, Cash G. Who's that? Uh, Andrew Charles. He said Tank, Tank Davis, Tank Davis, <laughs> the best fighter in the world. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> the brother Dave Jack, Dave Jack. Hey, for the past like a uh, couple of months, Dave Jack been in here too, man. He been he been coming. Yeah, I see. Big it. brother Asia Math. I see Asia. Right on. Asia got Fox it. Fox fans, Hustler Slim, mm-hmm. and of course the OG Reggie. Mother F and Owens. Reggie, you going live after this? If you are, everybody going to slide over to the channel. If you're not going live, we're going to check out the last two or three videos. Hit the thumbs up, like button, share, comment, and subscribe. Box the Conversations with Reggie Owens. Salute to the barbershop. I was ready, nigga. I was ready. I was ready, nigga. I was ready. I was ready, <laughs> Terrence. Hey, Terrence, I appreciate you, dog. Hey, Andre, G5, Eric, Hustler Slim. What's up, man? What's up? What's up, Kenyatta Ali, man? Tri- triple OG. You, I, hey, I wanted that triple OG call tonight. How about you? Hell yeah. I wanted that. Hey, hey, I actually wanted uh, H Buddy to get in too. That shit would have been classic. His fucking energy would have been bouncing every fucking where. You know what I mean? <laughs> he called it way too. Shout out to H Buddy. Yeah, she was giving her outro already. I couldn't stop the outro, man. She gave us a lot, man. She gave us two strong hours. You know what I mean? Yeah, Kaufman was like 170 running like a 4-3. Yeah, that motherfucker was a... He was a problem. You know what I mean? He was a real problem, Dave Jack. L Boogie, G5, man. Yeah, he was a problem. He was a real problem, that son of a bitch. So, yeah, we out this motherfucker. But let's say play one more time. Let's play us here to sing this shit together. We ain't there yet, nigga. Slow down, nigga. Slow down. Put the condom on first, nigga. Hey. Cause the devil is a lie. Hey. 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 It's all in what you do. Hey. hey. Some things you gotta do. Hey. 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 Triple OG. You gotta call. We gotta hear your voice tomorrow. All right. We got. Oh, we got your girl Cheryl coming in tomorrow, Reggie. I got. Triple OG, I got a I got a time slot just for you. <laughs> so man, it's gonna be a hell of a show tomorrow. It's gonna be a strong, intense show tomorrow. That's what it looks like. She didn't cut me off. I was gonna I was going out already. <laughs> I was with you. Hey, your pauses. <laughs> hey, hey, TB's pauses was becoming more frequent. So I was like, nigga, get off the phone. <laughs> We got it. We good now. We Gucci. Here, here you go. There you go, Rob. There you go, Rob. Yeah, man. Hey. <laughs> that nigga started pausing this shit. I didn't want that nigga to. <laughs> oh, man. That nigga getting seizures and shit. That nigga. That nigga got excited and tried to beam in and shit, but I couldn't get to. I definitely wanted. I was trying to get to you, TV. I was trying, but you disappeared on me, dog. I was trying to get to you for sure. You know, but this nigga DB wanted the motherfucking nigga. He wanted to know everything about her. <laughs> I'm like, nigga, get off the phone. You hear the phone going off and shit. Hey, that's another thing. 
after this shit play, I'm playing this shit one more. No rehearsal. It's all in what you do. Hey, 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 I love y'all. Hey, last thing, y'all. When y'all niggas on the phone and y'all hear that shit ringing three and four times, nigga, speed the fuck up. Well, y'all niggas speed the fuck up. It's a hot show, nigga. Get off the motherfucking phone. Get off the pot, as your as your uncle would say. Get off the pot, nigga. Right. <laughs> hey, I love you, man. I appreciate you, big homie. Back at you, bro, bro. All right, see you tomorrow. Peace, yeah. nigga. All right. Yeah, man, I'll see y'all niggas tomorrow. We had a great show, Mr. Vegas, man. I appreciate it. Hey, where's Mr. Finesse at? I ain't seen that nigga in a minute. Speaking of Mr. Vegas, Mr. Finesse, where you been? How you been? Where you go? I appreciate y'all niggas. We out this motherfucker, man. Yeah, DBB. Hey, DBB singing them background vocals like a motherfucker on this song, don't he? <laughs> hey, speaking of that, Pretty Beast did the background vocals. I picked up on that shit on her song. We gravy, Barbershop. We gravy. Yeah, we, we throwing away that G-U-C-C-I. I'm going to stop saying that. I've been saying it for years. All right, I love y'all. Peace. See y'all tomorrow. Cheryl Dorsey tomorrow. Wu-Tang Sunday. We popping, y'all. I holla. Peace.